ABC Sports presents High School Football. Tonight's game is brought to you by Don't Ford, Southeastern Med, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WV Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Skinner Insurance Agency, Convenient Food Mart of Barnesville, Vision One Flooring, Village Hardware and Rental, Rumor Loudon, Barnesville Do It Best, Barnesville Hospital, The Barnesville 200 Club, Flag Floors, Smithburger Realty, First Ohio Home Finance, PVF Supply, Surgeon Construction, Dave's Buy, Sell, and Trade, Box Drop Buysville, Emory Heating and Cooling, Barnesville Vet Services, and Allen Hunter State Farm. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to WBNV Sports and our live webcast on YRP TV on YouTube and on Facebook Live. Glad you're with us here for a absolutely gorgeous week number 12 of this football season. Second round of the playoffs, Division 5, Region 19. Barnesville Shamrocks head coach Blake Allen undefeated so far this year, 11-0, as they host their second playoff opponent in a row. Tonight, a very, very stingy and tough Wheelersburg Pirate crew that is eight and three on the season so far. Dave Davidson and Jeff Stevens along for Shamrock football tonight. Mark Brown has the evening off. He is at the state cross country meet uh, in Columbus here this weekend. Uh, so great to be back with you again, Jeff. It's been a long time here, it seems like, uh, since we've been paired up together. Uh, we're looking forward to a really electric night of high school football. This Wheelersburg Pirate team, make no mistake, even though they're a little bit lower seed, uh, this team is for real. Well, in talking to some of the radio people from Wheelersburg also, they said the one thing that hurt them this year was some of the people that normally have a pretty good year that they beat and they get extra, you know, second-level points had poor years. So really, you know, in their mind, they were, you know, a little bit under low seated at number six. Mm -hmm. They feel like, and, and Coach Blake Allen had said early in the year, he felt like Wheelersburg along with Ironton and Harvest Prep were the three three teams in, in there. So don't, don't get... Uh, <laughs> Don't get overconfident, you know, because this Wheelersburg team has three losses. They've lost to the quality people. Their tradition goes way, way back. And they come here with uh, over 70 kids in uniform, took three buses to yeah. get them here. Uh, you know, and, 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 and they're very big, you know. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, Barnes was going to have to play a really, really good game. And let's be honest, you know, Barnes was probably a bit of an underdog tonight. Right. They're probably on paper, you would say, you would say so. Wheelersburg, their 33rd playoff appearance uh, in their school history. They have two state championships in 89 uh, 2017, the most recent, just five years ago. Um, uh, Joe Bradfield over next door, the PA announcer, he was wearing his, uh, hopefully for good luck for Barnesville tonight, he was wearing his uh, 1992 shirt <laughs> in which uh, on, the note, on the back of the note it said that Barnesville, uh, first round of the playoffs, defeated Wheelersburg 14-7. So he's hoping, obviously, for a Barnesville victory, as is the home crowd here. But uh, Barnesville certainly, after a cardiac win last week, with under 10 seconds to go in the game to, to come away with a win against Piketon, they're going to have to play better football tonight for sure. Well, yeah, and, and really two weeks in a row because the week before to get to 10 and 0 went right to the wire yeah. on an incomplete pass with less than 30 seconds <laughs> left on that. But I, I think you're exactly right. I think Barnesville, you know, will have to play a, a very near perfect game. I felt last week against Piketon, when Barnes was ahead 14 nothing at halftime, that it should have been more than that. But they had a couple of turnovers and bogged down on a couple of mistakes there. And in the second half, Piketon came out and basically dominated play, mm -hmm. except for that last minute. And Barnesville found a way to get it done and, and came out with a victory. And thus, we're here tonight. Our pregame tonight here on 93 B&V and on YRP TV is brought to you by Vision One Flooring. Call them today for your next project. We'll step away here for just a moment. We'll talk more in our pregame report here about the Wheelersburg Pirates and the Barnesville Shamrocks as we get set for second round of the playoffs here in Region 19, Division 5, as we return to Shamrock Stadium in just a moment. Skinner Insurance was established in 1935. They have over 87 years of experience in the insurance industry over three generations of agency owners. They are an independent agency but their main carrier is Grange Insurance Company. They offer all major lines of insurance including auto, home, farm, motorcycle, boat, RV, business owners and life insurance. Skinner Insurance is located at 777 East Main Street. Call them at 425-1012 or visit them online at skinnerinsurance.com. Best of luck to the Shamrocks. It's convenient to shop at Convenient Food Mart in Barnesville. Check out the delicious weekly deli specials. You'll find a great lunch menu Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. 
If you're heading to the game, Convenient Food Mart has everything you need, including wings, chips, pop, and ice, and make sure you call in your tailgate order before the game. Program your cell phone to 425-3700 for all the great deals at your local Convenient Food Mart, South Chestnut Street in Barnesville. 425-3700. Today on Hey Culligan, soft water, cleaner environment. What do you say, Greg? Hey Culligan, are you saying if I have a Culligan high-efficiency water softener, I'm also helping the environment? It sounds like you're saying it, Greg, and yes you are, because with the Culligan high-efficiency water softener, you'll use less detergent, soap, and harsh chemicals, and that's good for the planet. Now you're saying it. You bet I am, Greg. Soft water and a cleaner environment is already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Research shows listeners prefer a personalized experience. So to help you remember, Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance. They personalize this ad for Amber, who really misses boy bands from the 90s. Hey, girl. (laughs) I'm the cute one. Here to tell you how Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance so you only pay for what you need. I'm the heartthrob. The only thing I love more than you is saving. And I'm the other boy in the band everyone forgot about. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. When it comes to the care of your pets, trust Barnesville Veterinary Services, located at 207 North Chestnut in beautiful downtown Barnesville. They provide small animal care and emergency services to their current clients. Please call for availability. Barnesville Veterinary Services is a proud sponsor of the Barnesville Shamrocks. Go Rocks! Call Vision One Flooring for your next home project. Vision One Flooring can create a custom backsplash to make your kitchen stand out. They are there for your flooring needs and can create custom bathrooms. Vision One Flooring is happy to serve Barnesville's community and the southeastern Ohio area with 15 years experience. Give them a call at 296-9340. Don't forget to like and follow them on Facebook. Vision One Flooring, if you have a vision, we are the one for you. High School Football from ABC Sports on WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield, 93 BNV. Welcome back to WBNV Sports and on YRP TV and Facebook Live. Glad you're with us here on our live stream and on our FM broadcast. Dave Davidson, Jeff Stevens from Shamrock Stadium. Uh, places electric, big crowd here tonight. Pretty impressed with the number of Wheelersburg fans that made it here tonight, too, Jeff, from over three hours away. Well, they, uh, some people told me ahead of time, you know, three buses for their team and two buses for their, uh, for their band on Ooh. that. But, you know, I think I count 73 players on their, or their football roster on that. But, you know, you know, quite a tradition. And, you know, a three-hour ride's not unusual for oh, them because in the years they've been involved in the playoffs. Because mm-hmm. I think they're probably used to people coming to them most years. Yeah. One of the things we're talking about uh, before we went on uh, tonight, Jeff, is uh, the concern that I'm sure that Blake Allen has is the size of the O-line, especially for Wheelersburg. Yeah, they're, they're very big. And, and not only, you know, big is a Husky 240, 250, you know, 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", also, you know, in size. So just, just, just big young men. Not, mm-hmm. not big kids, they're big young men. Yep. Our pregame tonight brought to you by Vision One Flooring. Call them today for your next project. We'll step aside for just a moment as we will come back on ABC Sports in just a moment. No need to go out of town for your hardware or rental needs because of Village Hardware and Rental in downtown Barnesville. They have the tools and supplies for your seasonal projects. So stop by today at 265 South Chestnut and see those selection of Case Knives, Melissa and Doug Toys, Valspar Paints, and so much more. Village Hardware has an indoor lumber yard and rentals to help you tackle any project, big or small. Shop smart and shop local with Village Hardware and Rental. Go Rocks! Here's a home comfort tip from Rumor Loudon Incorporated. The weather sure can be odd in the Ohio Valley, but one thing for sure is you will need your furnace eventually. Things can happen over the summer that affect your furnace operation. So here are some tips to help if your furnace doesn't work at that first startup of the season. Be sure your flues are clear. Bird and bug nests, even thick spider webs can block your flues. The safety kicks in and won't let your furnace ignite. For propane or oil furnaces, make sure you have fuel in your tanks. Also be sure a fuse didn't blow or a switch get turned off during the summer. Remember which mode you're trying to operate in. We often have to use the furnace air and the air conditioner in the same day. Also remember you always turn the thermostat up to be warmer and down to be cooler no matter what mode it's in. Check condensate drains for high efficiency gas furnaces to be sure they're not clogged with mold. And of course, check your filters and cleaner changes needed. 
If you require service, please call Rumor Loudon in Barnes or St. Clairsville, but remember these tips and they may save you money. Whether you are experiencing pain in your knee, tingling in your fingers, or a sore back, Superior Med Orthopedics is here for you. Their patients' health and safety is their top priority, and they currently offer telehealth visits for your initial appointment. Take comfort in knowing when you come to their facility, they're following all protocols to ensure you remain safe. Find out all their team offers by visiting seormc.org today to learn more. Barnesville Do It Best, 140 South Chestnut in downtown Barnesville, is a full-line hardware store featuring electrical, plumbing, paint, hardware, and lawn and garden departments. They provide chain sharpening, window repair, pipe cutting, custom color matching, and key cutting services. This fall, stop down to Barnesville Do It Best for steel outdoor power equipment, including trimmers, chainsaws, and blowers. Barnesville Do It Best has a best rewards program where you get one point for every dollar spent. 140 South Chestnut, Barnesville Do It Best is a proud sponsor the Barnesville Shamrocks. At WVU Medicine Barnesville Hospital, we're delivering the right care at the right place at the right time. Whether you're injured in the big game or backyard family fun, we're ready to get you back to performing your best on the field or off. Barnesville Hospital offers state-of-the-art diagnostic imaging services like x-rays, a new CAT scan that provides the greatest degree of resolution, clarity, and definition in our images, and our MRI that can help our team of physicians diagnose torn ligaments and other tissue injuries. WVU Medicine Barnesville Hospital is proud to be your community hospital, delivering the right care at the right place at the right time. Welcome back. Thanks to Brett Klein and uh, the, all the gang here helping us out on our live stream tonight. Uh, we appreciate uh, Brett, who's nice and cozy in the booth with us here tonight. Jeff Stevens, Dave Davidson, filling in for Mark Brown. He's up at the state cross-country meet this weekend. And, and let's, Good you know, luck to and let's mention you know, Mark, you know, you know, Mark and his sophomore runner, Connor Starr. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, also, there, you know, sophomore his first time qualifying for something like that. You know, really a big. That's a big event for a sophomore to qualify for something like Absolutely. that. So, wish him the best. He he goes at eleven o'clock tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you don't tell Brownie it might that it's because of him. He might, you know, the head might swell a little bit. So we don't want to get don't want to get him too puffed up here. Uh, looking again at Wheelersburg, uh, we talked about the offensive line and the size there, Jeff. Uh, this quarterback, uh, you know, Eli Jones, looks like, uh, you know, he could be another scary specimen as well at six foot four, 205 pounds. Uh, and, and you see that quite a bit, you know, among the line. They like said, you know, six four, two hundred five for the quarterback. You know, across the front offensive line, they go uh, 6'5", 250, 6'2", 260, 5'11", 275, 6'2", 245, and 6'5", 220. You know, and that's, I don't think there's any question, you know, Barnesville's not seen five offensive linemen that size all year. And we also, you know, you hope that Barnesville's quickness of the front four up front with Marshall Mead, Quentin Lazier, Robbie Nixon, and Luke Taylor, who are going to be tested here right away on the kickoff. Three of those four, all but Quentin Lazier, the senior returner, are just a tick under 200 pounds. You're hoping that, you know, just the quickness will outdo the size and uh, strength. And also on a warm night, which it is tonight, you know, believe it or not, you know, here we are in November and we're <laughs> near, near 70 degrees at kickoff. Yeah. You know, Wheelersburg only plays about five or six kids both ways. They have about five kids who play offense only and, and, and defense only. So, you know, on the long run, you know, you know, that could be a factor in, in the game, too, because Willisburg's going to line it up and just, you know, basically run it right at you, you know, with, with some pretty quick running backs. Well, and it's not to say, you know, Barnesville, certainly they've had uh, they've had a lot of success. Maybe their strength of schedule and maybe not quite as strong as what Wheelersburg's has been through the bulk of the 10 games during the regular season. But certainly, uh, you know, C.J. Hannes, experienced quarterback, now a senior, uh, has come back. Uh, Duker Costello has come up big. Uh, Taysen Starr, you got Almarez in the backfield. So even though it's a f still a fairly young squad, still some experience there uh, that will lead them tonight. Yeah, in, in the games I've seen, Barnes, and this this will be the eighth time I've seen the Shamrocks this year. I've been very impressed with their inside linebackers, uh, Almarez and Starr in particular. And I know a few weeks ago, we've seen Shannon Doe, I thought that front four, you know, played just outstanding against a, a pretty good Shenandoah offense. But, you know, they, they will be up against it tonight because of the size. And like you said, you, you know, hope that maybe uh, a little bit of quickness at some key spots. You know, sometimes quickness can run circles around size, and sometimes size just overpowers you. Well, you hope that Taysen Starr, especially here for Barnesville, really has himself, uh, you know, a little more than a pedestrian night. He has 942 yards, 17 touchdowns on the season averaging about seven yards a carry, so you hope that that continues. It's certainly going to be a lot tougher. It's, 
arguably is going to be facing the toughest defense he's seen all year. And, and what we've seen the last couple weeks out of the Shamrocks also is they went to a lot of empty backfield. You know, they'll, they'll put Star out, you know, put Panamares from his fullback spot in like a wing position. You know, you put like three and four wide receivers and, and have Hannes in the backfield by himself and run him a lot just on straight quarterback keepers. Mm -hmm. now you, you spread the defense out and, and let your athletes make plays. So you, you hopefully you know you can get some of the players like Detling and, and Costello in the passing game, get them out you know on short passes outside and let their athleticism make a move and get them downfield. You know, last week you know Luke Detling made you know our, our play of the game you know with a 44 yard catch and run that helped set up that winning touchdown yeah. and that was you know just pure athleticism enabled him to do that. Absolutely. Let's look couple of keys to tonight's game. First for the Wheelersburg Pirates. They had a long three-bower plus road trip tonight to get here. What do they need to do to win? Well, I think you know, just the basics of then. You know, I think they're going to feel very confident in themselves just because of their past experience. You know, where they can feel like they can line it up and run against anybody. They've lost a you know a couple of pretty good teams this year that by relatively close scores. So I, I feel they're not intimidated by the three-hour bus trip, by the crowd, or anything mm -hmm. because they know they know they've got a job to do, and I think their tradition will go a long way. Right. Now for Barnesville, as you said earlier in the pregame here, a couple of key turnovers, one that I think was really deep uh, in the red zone of Piketon last week. What does what does Barnesville need to tweak this week in order to get another win? Well, I think very basically, you know, Barnesville, you know, tonight, you know, needs to play a, a very near perfect ball game offensively and defensively. You can't come out and turn the ball over. Last week, three turnovers, including that one that you just mentioned on a first and goal with the one, and that's when Piketon come down then in a long drive and tied the game. You know, you, you can't have penalties and you can't have turnovers when you're playing against a quality opponent. And this uh, Shamrock team has really got a lot of juniors and sophomores that are in here too. Do you think uh, last week's stage broke them in a little bit? Do well, they do they feel the pressure a little bit tonight? You would like to think so, but yet, you know, you know, I'm sure the coach Allen and his staff, you know, have talked all week about, you know, the tradition of Wheelersburg. And, and so there's going to be butterflies out there, obviously. I think, you know, right away here, you know, very, very key, you know, because Barnesville will be kicking off here as they won the toss and deferred. So Wheelersburg's offense on the, on the field, uh, you know, it's may, mainly a run first offense, but they can throw the ball also. You know, so we'll, you know, we'll see how it happens here. Looking for a good one. Eric Lattimore and Creed Warren, number 18 and number 25, respectively, back for Wheelersburg in their road white jerseys with the black pants for our radio listeners, orange helmets, and Barnesville in their all shamrock greens. And that is Creed Warren, who slips away from the first level of coverage people around the 26-yard line and will scamper up ahead of the 35, brought down after about an 11-yard return up near the 37-yard line or so. So... Decent field position for the Pirates to start. Their offense looks like this across the front, left to right. Cole Eastep, 6'5", 250 junior, as Jeff had mentioned. Caleb Miller, 260-pound senior guard. Center is Nate May, 275 pounds a junior. A pair of seniors on the right side of the line, number 61, Joden Blackburn, and number 51, Xavier Stanley. The tight end is Caleb Arthur, number 32, and he comes and sets up in motion now on the right side. And they'll bring a motion man across. That's Ethan Glover leading the way for Warren. Warren slips through the first level of defense. C.J. Hannes and company, as well as linebacker Luke Taylor comes up I, with a stop after a gain of five. It looked like they had him hemmed in pretty good there, but you know, he ends up getting five yards, and it looked like you know, you know, not much. Wide receivers are Eric Lattimore, 18. And Landon McGrew, McGraw, number six to the far side of the field left on a second and five. Handoff straight ahead. Barnesville bottles that up a couple of yards ahead of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Marshall, Marshall Mead and Quentin Lazier right yep. there on that. They're still going to get forward across the 45, pick up about three yards. So Creed Warren, junior running back at 155 pounds, number 25. The first two carries of the game so far. Lattimore... And wide receiver Kenyon Evans, number nine. Line up short side receivers to the right side. A third and two now for Wheelersburg from their own 46. Handoff and slipping through the line. There goes the runner, Ethan Glover, with his first carry. He'll have a Wheelersburg first down. A rumor Loudon first down, and that will get it to the 44 of Barnesville and a gain of about 12. So Wheelersburg moves the chains for the first time. And the Barnesville defense now trying to 
bottle things up inside as Eli Jones, six foot four, 205 pound senior QB, number eight, calls the signals, gives it off on a sweep to the left side, cutting it back toward the middle. There goes Warren and a touchdown saving tackle perhaps by safety CJ Hannes and another first down for the Wheelersburg Pirates all the way to the Shamrock 24 yard line and a gain of 20. That's a you know, big gain there. You know, Warren wasn't one of the guys we were looking for there early, but you know, three carries here early in the game. And again, they'll go with the jet sweep action and the handoff this time is Lattimore and he has stopped short after a couple of yards gained to the 22. He was hit immediately and dropped. Luke Detling was in there along with Robbie Nixon in the area. Second down and a long seven coming up. So Shamrock defense, Marshall Meade, Quentin Lazier, Robbie Nixon, Luke Taylor up front. Linebackers on the outsides, Brady McIntyre, number 11, number 87, Casey Carpenter, Salvador Almarez, number five, and Taysen Starr, number one on the inside. And the handoff off the left side of the line and cutting through, that's Derek Lattimore, 205-pound senior runner. So already four different ball carriers have touched the ball for Wheelersburg, and that will be another Pirates first down to the Shamrock 11-yard line. Gain of 11 more, that time for Derek Lattimore. So Eric and Derek, 18 and two, both producing first downs on this drive so far. But here we are, you know, as you said, you know, Wheelersburg has showed four different ball carriers. And this will be the quarterback, Eli Jones, keeping it himself. And he'll scamper to the five yard line as the Barnesville defense pursued out toward the wide side right. And coming in with the stop, Salvador Almarez was in the area. But not until Eli Jones picks up six good yards on first down again. The first three minutes gone yeah. here in the first quarter. And, and, and to keep it by the quarterback, that now makes five ball <laughs> carriers on this opening possession. They are mixing it up and eight, throwing everything at them. Eight plays. That's Derek Lattimore with the handoff. Number two up the left side of the line. Bulls his way toward the three, maybe to the two. Picks up another two more tough yards. Just short of the two-yard line of Barnesville. So now the Shamrock defense now looking for a way to buck up here with a third and a short two. And the Pirates, I don't believe, can pick up. Well, can they get it? Yeah, first like they, down? I think they can get a like first down. Can. It's going to be about uh, one yard for the first down. Split backs on either side of the quarterback. Handoff, touchdown, Wheelersburg. And that's Derek Lattimore with the touchdown run for the Pirates. And just like that, Wheelersburg takes command early and comes up with a six to nothing lead. That was not Derek Lattimore, excuse me. That was number 21, Landon Hutchison. That'll make six different guys for the Pirates who have touched the football as they methodically move the ball down the field for 64 yards and a game scoring drive with 8.04 to go in the first quarter. Holder is Creed Warren. And the boot by Connor Estep is up and good. He has not missed all year. He's now and perfect 50 for 50. And people are familiar with the Barnesville area and stuff. He has kicked that one over the roof of the field house, over to the practice field. That's how kind of leg he has. So he has got a strong leg. 7-0 Wheelersburg. Barnesville's got to recover. We'll step out for 30 seconds, and we'll come back. We'll see if the Shamrocks have an answer for the Pirates as we continue our week two of the playoff coverage here from Shamrock Stadium in just a moment. Barnesville 200 Club is having a membership drive. The 200 Club was established in 1969 to support all Barnesville sports. In the past, they've contributed to all Shamrock athletic departments. Items such as football helmets, baseballs, softballs, track equipment, swim team jackets, cross-country equipment, wrestling awards, and hotel rooms for state tournament qualifiers. Current membership stands at 214 members. Help by joining the 200 Club and support all Barnesville athletes. For more information about the 200 Club, contact club treasurer Tim McKelvey or any 200 Club member. Let's go Shamrocks! Back to Shamrock Stadium, our webcast crew, Director Brett Klein, Andrew Dunlap on camera, Dave Davidson and Jeff Stevens here. So a good start for the visitors here, Jeff. 8.04 remaining first quarter, a 7-0 lead for Wheelersburg, and they made it look easy. Uh, very easy. You know, running, uh, every play was a running play. Ten plays down the field and just, you know, easy is not the word. They just, it was really, that should be concerning for the Barnesville defense. So we'll see what the Barnesville Samrock offense can do. C.J. Hannes and company. Kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon in Barnesville. And this will be return for Hannes. Breaks through. That's Duker Costello. And escapes a tackle at the 38. He's all the way inside 
Wheelersburg territory at the 42 yard line and a big return of 54 yards. Costello took that kick on about his own two yard line right up the middle, made a couple nice moves and showed the speed. So that kind of got the crowd a little bit re-energized here. Or, and it should hopefully get this Shamrock offense energized as well. They'll start at the 42 yard line. Offensive line, Quentin Lazier, Hank Johnson up front. The left guard, number 50, Marshall Mead, 52, a sophomore. Braden Butler, number 62, the right guard. 54, Luke Taylor at right tackle. And Hannes gets the snap. Big hole on the left side. He could be gone. Down to the 10, the 5, and he scores. Touchdown, Shamrocks. Did you say something about responding? I think that's a response. 42 yards for the quarterback, C.J. Hannes, set up by the Duker Costello. 54-yard kickoff return and one play from scrimmage. And Barnesville with a chance here with an Evan Lowe PAT to tie the game. 19 seconds off the clock since the Wheelersburg touchdown. Let's hope that Shamrock defense has had a chance to catch their breath. Evan Lowe, point after attempt, and this one is good. And Evan hitting on 98% of his PATs this year, nails another one. And just like that, we've got fireworks in Shamrock land, 7-7 game, Wheelersburg and Barnesville. We'll step aside for a moment, comes back with our playoff coverage here in week number 12 of the football season after this word. Flag Floors of Barnesville has been delivering superior quality flooring solutions for over 30 years. They feature carpet, vinyl, wood, and ceramic flooring and cater to both residential and commercial customers. They also have custom cabinets, Kensington High Performance windows, and Liberty safes, including handgun vaults. Flag Floors even has a complete line of rental items to help you tackle those jobs and a wide range of cleaners and polishers. It's all at Flag Floors, 324 South Chestnut Street in Barnesville. Call 425-3344. Visit them online at flagfloors.com and like them on Facebook. Back on 93 B and V FM and on YRP TV on YouTube and Facebook Live. And we appreciate everybody watching uh, our live stream uh, broadcast here tonight from Brett Klein and Andrew Dunlap. Close to 1,000 viewers right now we see uh, between the two. So glad you're on board with us and wherever you are. And what a difference there. Willisburg, 10 plays, all running plays for their touchdown drive. Barnesville takes them one play to tie the game. And the kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon. Scooped up inside the 18-yard line, and here comes another potential big return. Flag is down way behind the play, and the return man will bring it all the way into Barnesville territory near the 40, and that is Creed Warren again. But the penalty flag is back at the Wheelersburg 30-yard line, and it's on an illegal block on the Pirates. Our first penalty of the game. And that's a, a crucial penalty there that's going to put the hurts on the Wheelersburg mm. offense. Instead of having the ball out near the Barnesville 40, they're going to be back probably near their own 20-yard line for what we assume is a, a block in the back. Yep. Nose of the football back at the 20-yard line inside the left hash mark. So Wheelersburg now 80 yards from the goal instead of 40. So a big penalty on special teams. A pivotal return. Wheelersburg's offense goes to work again. Eli Jones, 6'4", senior quarterback number eight. Has the snap from the gun, and he'll keep it himself on the run option. And good thing he kept it himself. He was tripped up by linebacker Salvador Almaraz yeah. there. About three yards, maybe a four-yard gain up to the 24. Yeah, pretty good job there by Almaraz, you know, to make that play. You know, that's the second carry of the game by the quarterback, Jones. And as I said, they, they've moved things around. They like said that 10-play drive, they had six different ball carriers and did not attempt a pass yet, yeah, but we're still early. Second and six play for Wheelersburg, and the give off the left side. And again, we're trying to pick up the orange numbers off the white jerseys a little bit 24, tough. 24, I think. Looks like uh, 24, Ethan Glover with his second carry, and he'll pick up a close to about three yards plus, and stopped about two and a half yards short of the 30 yard line for a key third down situation here for the Rocks defense. 6.35 and counting in this first quarter in a 7-7 game. I formation now for Wheelersburg with a receiver on each side. Fullback, quick hitter up the middle and Barnesville stuffs it. Never got back to the line of scrimmage. They're gonna lose a couple of yards. 
I'll tell you, from the outside linebacker, there's Casey Carpenter's one, and then that middle has to be Almarez and, and, um, and probably Starr in there also. Looked and like the, Glover again. Was it Glover, Glover or say. Hutchison, 21. But uh, he's going to lose a couple of yards. Yep, back to the 26-yard line. Wheelersburg in punt formation. The punter, Connor Eastep. Costello and Detling will go deep. So nice job there for a three and out for the Barnesville defense. And a good snap back to Eastep under some pressure right there. And gets it away. Duker Costello makes the fair catch signal at the 40-yard line of Barnesville. And that was a pretty good job by Eastep just to get that punt away under a little bit of heat. From yeah, he cut. He really took his time there. a lot there. So, but yeah. you know, it was a very high kick. You know, uh, not very deep at all. And Costello, done going, you know, doing the wise thing, stepped up there. And you must, as a return man, you must catch the ball. Mm -hmm. And he was very wise, I think, to use the, the fair catch there. Yep. You know, so Barnes was going to take over their second possession at, at the 40 yard line. Excellent field position. You know, midway through the first quarter, game tied at seven. Marshall Mead, number 52, provided the pressure on the punter and. Good job from him just to check up and not run into the punter. That would have given Wheelersburg a first down as he's able to uh, if he knocks down the punter. As we said, you know, it was from a Barnesville standpoint, you can't commit foolish penalties. First and ten play. A couple of backs staggered on the left side of the quarterback. Hannes gets the carry. Looks like close to the same play that they just scored on. Well, he's on still the previous scrimmage. Well, he's and still fighting forward. forward. They, they finally blow yep. the whistle. I think he was stopped after about a five-yard gain, but kept pushing forward with his lineman in there, and he's going to get a couple more. So he's about a seven-yard pickup for Hannes on his first down. Picks up seven, and the Pirates' defense up front: Xavier Stanley, 51; Cole Rea, 50; number 61, Joden Blackburn, and 88, Cody Risner. Uh, the other defensive end on the left side. Ethan Glover, 24. Braden Maxia, Jr., number 28, the linebackers. Secondary of Xander Mowry, number 12. Eric Lattimore, 18. And Jake Darling, number 29. Creed Warren, 25. And Landon Hutchison, number 21. That's a backward throw to Duker Costello, and he has wrapped up immediately. He's going to lose a few yards. That's a great play by the defense. It come up. I'm not sure who the player was. There it might be. Uh, Xander Mallory who came up and Costello is actually going to lose about three yards mm -hmm. on that. I'm not sure if they ruled that a forward pass or not. It looked like it probably was backward but we'll probably call it a completed we'll call it a pass for pass. minus three unofficially. But, uh, but now Shamrock's looking at third and six after that you know quick strike score on their first possession. You know, Obviously a big third down play here as they want to maintain some momentum here on their offense. Key third down play here for Barnesville. Just their fourth play from scrimmage. And we're going to get a and whistle. we're going to have a timeout. No, I think we're going to get a... No, it's a penalty flag on the far well, side. Well, I'll tell you, if I read the signal, it's going to be a sideline warning on the Wheelersburg hmm. sideline. Hmm. And that's interesting time the, for that call. Well, stopping the play, too, is very interesting. I'm not sure. And there's, there's not a lot of room on the sideline there between the out-of-bounds line and the, the bleachers. But yet, you know, when you've got... 70 kids over there <laughs> on that, but obviously, you know, some coaches a little bit too far out yeah. for the, the suiting of the referee, <laughs> and you see that a lot, you sideline warning early in the game, just yep. to say, hey, guys, stay back. Yep. So, third and six, Shamrocks. From the 44, snap back to Hannah's out of the gun, rolls out to his left, heaves one deep, looking for Costello, it's going to be intercepted, Wheelersburg's got it at the 26-yard line. Mowry. And that is Xander Mowry, the sophomore at five foot eleven. With the pickoff, good one-on-one -on -one coverage for Duker Costello. Hannes under some pressure as he had to heave that one away. And that's 30 yards downfield, so I guess if there is a positive there, that was basically a, a punt as we look at it again. Mm -hmm. Aaron, you see downfield, you know, pretty good coverage there, and not a whole lot Costello could do. Just you know, excellent coverage in the game's first turnover. Excellent play by the sophomore, Mowry. So Wheelersburg takes over after the first turnover of the game, as you said, doesn't hurt Barnesville near as much as a couple of turnovers that they committed last week, at least so far. 3.49 to go in the first quarter, 7-7 game. Wheelersburg now takes over, and on the sweep to the left side, that's Creed Warren, and Barnesville will have nothing of it as they swarm to the football outside left, and that's yeah. going to be a loss of four yards for Carp Creed yeah. Warren. Car Carpenter, Starr, uh, Detling also up on that side. Just, you know, good job there. Loss of, they'll put it down now at about the 24. Four, call it about a three-yard loss. Yep. But you, but that's a couple of nice plays. Now, you know the Shamrocks after that opening possession. You know they've now basically you know with a three and out and then a big stop there on that first down play. You know getting themselves established. 
Creed Warren in motion to the left side. There's a big hole up the middle and cut down by safety Luke Detling who made a first down saving tackle for sure and maybe a potential big play or six, six point play down. A gain of seven for the running back Derek Lattimore. And Wheelersburg, you know, in a hurry. They're right back to the line of scrimmage. You know, there's no, no huddle uh, by the Pirates. Derek Lattimore, number two, much bigger specimen than Eric, number 18. He's a 205-pounder. Fake the handoff to him. Eli Jones, the quarterback, keeps it. He's going to be short. He is going to be short of the first down. He'll pick up about three, close to four. But he was cut down there nicely. I think that was Almarez right there, number five, the inside linebacker in the middle of that play, along with Detling, the safety, coming up and helping. And Wheelersburg will bring on the punt team, so two possessions in a row. Shamrock's, you know, making stops, forcing a, a Wheelersburg punt. You know, after that first possession, each team scoring, and we looked like we was going to have a track meet. And but it looks like, yep, yeah, they're not going to punt. They're going to line up and go for it. And they slip down before the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be Barnesville football as the running back went to make a cut. 24 hours and that was Ethan Glover, a 195-pound senior, went to make his cut back to the middle of the field after starting left tackle, and is going to be a yard short of the first down, and a gamble early by the Wheelersburg Pirates, and the Rocks take over deep in Wheelersburg territory. <laughs> and I say, you know, he's, you said it right there. He started to cut back, and he slipped down, and then was covered immediately, and you know, Barnes will now great field position at the Wheelersburg 36-yard line. You know, two minutes left, opening period, tied at seven. Rob Woodward, head coach of the Pirates, taking a calculated risk there. Here's a backward pass to the tight end. Casey Carpenter, he's going to heave one deep, and that's going to be caught, and it's going to be a touchdown for Barnesville, but there is a penalty flag at about the 12-yard line. That's going to be pass interference, I'm sure. That's going to be a 36-yard touchdown, Shamrocks. Casey Carpenter on the pass. Starr was the receiver. Taysen Starr hauls it in on the far right side of the field. 36 yards. I thought there was a penalty flag down. It looked like there was one down over there, but it looks like Must be a leaf. not a flag, but a big leaf, in fact. So Barnesville comes away with the second touchdown, and the extra point by Evan Lowe is chip shot in and good. And with just under two minutes remaining in this first quarter, fireworks in this first period as both teams slugging it out, and the Shamrocks taking advantage of the fourth down stop. Two touchdowns by the Shamrocks, both one play possessions. One play possessions, 42 yards, and a 36 yard pass from tight end Casey Carpenter to junior Taysen Starr, and the Rocks enjoy a 14 to seven lead as our playoff coverage continues for the Shamrocks here on YRP TV and on 93 BNV in just a moment. Are you looking to buy or sell a home? Smithburger Realty can help you find your dream home or sell your current home. Don't be intimidated by the process. Melissa Smithburger and Crystal Vogler will be there to walk you through each and every step of the way. Melissa and Crystal are natives to the area and active members in the community. With their local expertise, they can make your home buying and selling experience a successful one. Smithburger Realty is proud to sponsor high school sports. Back to Shamrock Stadium. Thanks again to Andrew Dunlap on our on-field camera and Brett Klein, our director, on the web stream side. And a big recovery here for Barnesville after Wheelersburg methodically moved the ball down the field in just under four minutes and 64 yards. Ball is down by Xander Mowry yep. at the 36-yard line on that Rumor Loudon kickoff. Yeah, squib kick there, uh, trying to keep the ball away from the deep men. And the return man there for Wheelersburg, I think doing, doing a pretty good job just you know, falling on the ball and not trying to pick it up and do anything too fancy. But you know, Wheelersburg may be a little shell-shocked here. Barnesville was only run six plays from scrimmage, and two of them have been touchdowns. Two one-play touchdown drives. Eric Lattimore, receiver in the slot, along with Kenyon Evans, number nine. And they'll pitch it to the right side on the sweep. That's Creed Warren, and he is cut down by safety. Detling and Taysom Starr, Detling the first to hit him after a gain of about three, just ahead of the 40. Yeah, pretty good job there by, uh, we'll call it, it four yards, forward progress. But Detling came up, lowered the shoulder, and took the legs right out from under him. You know, doing a good job there in the open field, but it is a pickup of four, you know, close to five yards. 
The only thing that concerns you defensively, uh, Jeff, is that Detling, the safety, has been making some tackles. Rather see your front seven doing that. Here's a handoff and a big run for Ethan Glover off the left side. First down and more into the secondary to the 40, 35, and down near the 30 of Barnesville. 26 yards. And a big gain to the 31. And a good job of cutting back there and getting positive. And now Willersburg right here, right back on the line, and ready to go before the Barnesville defense can get set. Creed Warren, the tailback behind Ethan Glover out in the eye formation. Under a minute to go in this first quarter in a 14-7 Shamrock game. Straight ahead, carry short gain, a pickup of maybe two, just ahead of the 30. Warren with that carry. Marshall Mead was in the area along with Luke Taylor. Yeah. From on the outside linebacker spots there, it's a, a McIntyre also come up and get a piece of that. He played a really strong ball game last week. That's the sophomore Brady McIntyre. Should be the final play of this period. Handoff goes to Glover. And Glover is hit immediately. Taysom Starr was the first to hit him. And Almaraz finished Almaraz him right off. there too. Yep. He's going to pick up about three yards. And I'm, I'm getting... And the ball carrier was? That was Ethan Glover, 24. That'll be a third and a long five coming up into the first quarter from Shamrock Stadium. Home fans loving it as they have a 14-7 lead over Wheelersburg. Our ABC Sports coverage will continue as we start the second quarter after this. Are you looking to buy or sell a home? Smithberger Realty can help you find your dream home or sell your current home. Don't be intimidated by the process. Melissa Smithberger and Crystal Vogler will be there to walk you through each and every step of the way. Melissa and Crystal are natives to the area and active members in the community. With their local expertise, they can make your home buying and selling experience a successful one. Smithberger Realty is proud to sponsor high school sports. Hissom's Service Center and Towing is your one-stop shop for your vehicle. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. After taking care of your car's body work at Hissom's Body Shop, stop and fill up the tank at the full-service fuel pumps with diesel, off-road diesel, and non-ethanol gas. Stop down to Hissom's Service Center and Towing Service Department located at 827 East Main Street for oil changes, alignments, brake work, and anything else you need. Hissom's Service Center and Towing is proud to be a sponsor of local high school sports. Hissom's Service Center, where they'll clean off your windows and pump the gas for you. Back on 93 b and and YRP TV. And the fake to the quarterback, Eli Jones. They got the Shamrock defense to bait on it, and that'll be a first down as Taysen Starr runs him out of bounds on the far sideline, but not before Jones picks up a good seven yards, and he'll make it to the Barnesville 20-yard line near the red zone. As we start the second quarter, Barnesville leading it by a touchdown, but this running game for Wheelersburg has been very potent so far. Except for, you know, a, a little bit in a couple possessions now. First possession of the game in this possession, they've knocked off some pretty big chunks of yardage. Wheelersburg to the line from the Barnesville 20-yard line, down a touchdown. Eric Lattimore, the receiver to the left side. Hand off right up through the middle. That's Derek Lattimore. He escapes the secondary, and he is in all the way for a Pirates touchdown of 20 yards. And both defenses being gashed here at times in this first half so far as the Pirates now just a PAT away from Connor Eastep of tie in this game. Yeah, that was a pretty impressive drive to come back from Wheelersburg after giving up the go-ahead touchdown and come right back down the field and score that quickly. And 11.46 remaining in this first half. And now Connor Eastep with the point after attempt, number 81, out of the hold of Creed Warren. And, and he has, it is true and, again. And he hasn't missed an extra point they tell us all year. Effortless kick from Eastep, and it is 14-all, Wheelersburg and Barnesville. And our Shamrock football coverage here in the playoffs will continue on ABC Sports after this timeout. 
Buying a new home? Exciting! Figuring out how you're going to finance it? Not always so exciting. But that's what Angie Bradley and her team at First Ohio Home Finance are here for. Conventional loans, FHA loans, VA loans, USDA loans. Sure, it sounds like a lot of abbreviations, but Angie and her staff not only know what they all stand for, they can help you find the one that's right for you. So let the team at First Ohio Home Finance and Bradley Lending Team crunch the numbers and take care of the paperwork so you can concentrate on turning your new house into your new home. Call them at 740-421-4808 or visit them 1008 Woodlawn Avenue, Cambridge. Our thanks again to our live stream crew, Brett Klein, Andrew Dunlap. Thanks to everyone who's tuning in on our live stream uh, webcast. Quite a few of you, over well over 1,000 watching right now. And those of you listening on the FM side, we're still going to try to give you the visual pictures as well on 93 and, and, I'm, and I'm sure quite a few people who have tuned in on the live stream you know, from somewhere other than our general area. You know, I know of people in the past, you know, North Carolina, Arizona, and Florida, that have been tuned into Shamrock Games. And we may have some... Uh, Visitors from the Wheelersburg side, welcome aboard as well. Kickoff by Wheelersburg, taken by Duker Costello. And at the six-yard line, he'll bring it up to the 33-yard line, straight up the middle of the field with a 27-yard Rumor Loudon kickoff return. Yeah, Jake Darling, first tackler there for the Wheelersburg Pirates. You know, a little less return than what Costello had on his previous uh, attempt after the first touchdown. You know, looking at some scores right now. Caldwell is a 14-0 lead you know, early. Um, now 21 nothing. 21 nothing. It's went to Fort Fry 15 nothing over Shenandoah. Also early Waterford and Eastern are scoreless. We'll take a look at some other scores. Our scoreboard update brought to you by Doan Ford and Shrox Woodworking. And a handoff. This will be Taysen Starr with a rare carry, and he has a nice hole up the left side of the offensive line for a gain of eight up to the 43 yard line. An eight yard. Play there for the Rocks running back. Maxi, among others, on the stop. Now we got a sideline warning coming at Kitts. Barnesville now. <laughs> As Coach Blake Allen a little bit exuberant, uh, exuberantly stepping out onto the field a little bit. Yeah, well, I'm not going to get started. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> The, the coach I, in you is coming well, out. I, I had a coach tell me, an official, if you're worried about what's going on behind you, you're missing something in front of you. <laughs> Second and two play from the eye. Hannes on play action. He's looking deep for Costello again. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It's up for grabs. Duker has it. The defender slipped down at the 32, and Costello comes away with the grab. That might have been a little more lucky than good for Barnesville, but it works out to the Wheelersburg 26-yard line. At 32 yards. A bit lucky, perhaps, this time. Uh, you called it right. The defensive back you know, slipped there. So all, uh, all Costello had to do was go up and, and make the play and turn down the field, gets a few extra yards, 26-yard line. You know, Shamrock's right back down the field now. You know, Just underway, second quarter here, tied at 14. Corbin Wise, the senior, is a wide out to the far right side of the formation. Tight end Casey Carpenter now shifting back to the right side, providing a lead block. Star for Taysen Star, the runner. And a nice pickup on first down. He's got close to five, five and a half yards. Uh, I'm sure Coach Blake Allen will take that any time. 10.40 and counting. Second quarter action in a 14-all game here at Shamrock Stadium. I think that's uh, Taysen's first two carries of, of the game here on this, this possession. So the Shamrocks have not run very many plays. Wheelersburg's run a lot more plays because Barnes has, has had two possessions, one play, touchdown. Uh, well, right now only about 10 plays from scrimmage. Uh, Total almost for Barnesville, or just approaching that. I have about eight plays is all Barnesville has run in the game. Second and a long five out of the eye. Again, Taysen Starr slipped again as he went to made his cut, and, and that hole plugged up quickly as Wheelersburg stuffs that one for a loss. Tackle for loss for yeah. the Wheelersburg defense led as, by defensive tackle Joden Blackburn. As Xavier Stanley also right there, and that play is probably going to lose a yard. They'll move it back close to two yards, back to the 23-yard line. So a third down and a long six now for the Rocks under 10 minutes to go in his second quarter. Four down territory here, oh, with, you would with, think. Without question on that. You know, two, two more plays in order to get the seven yards that they need here. And they're going to bring three receivers wide right. And they'll empty the backfield for the first time as Hannah's Rolls out to his right side. He's looking for some space. Spins away from one tackle. He's got a first down into the Wheelersburg secondary near the 10. And a nice gain, 13 yards. 
He'll move it back to the 11, so about a 12-yard pickup for the quarterback, Hannahs. But a first down, and, you know, let's say they put it at the 11-yard line there. But, uh, you know, we've seen Barnes will do this a lot, you know, the last couple of weeks where they empty the backfield, three, four wide receivers, and let Hannahs pick his hole on, on design quarterback runs. And uh, that was a design quarterback run right there all the way. So the Rocks now still with a chance to pick up a first down at the one-yard line or closer. Hannahs under center. Fakes the pitch. Now comes about to the right side. He's got some traffic there. Pitches it outside to Duker Costello. Costello stays in bounds and will be run out just inside the six-yard line. So a little nifty kind of a jump pass almost from the outside. You usually see that type of play from maybe over the offensive line, but this time they kind of run it as a as an option pass yeah, almost, instead and picks yeah, up six. Almost like an option play, only the pass was forward. Costello was just you know a few yards down there. Hannes had nowhere to go, and he was going to lose yardage, so he just you know, basically like a little, almost like a basketball jump shot there to Costello, and the play's going to end up picking up six yards to the five-yard line. Detling to the right side, number eight, Costello to the left on second and four, and Taysen Starr was hit immediately, and wow. right there, the uh, the secondary man, Landon Hutchison, the safety, nearly took the handoff from uh, right. C.J. Hannes. He was back there that On quickly. that backside, he's coming hard on a blitz, and it's going to lose a yard. But he was coming hard all the way, and they were able to make the hit on Star. This is similar to a situation last week where Barnes was down close, and a big hit in the backfield resulted in a, in a turnover. So you know, right here, you know, you, you hope for no turnovers. Now third down, and it is third and about five for the first down, and about six for the touchdown. Detling to the far left side. Costello in the slot left. Hannah's on the keeper. The quarterback starts out left, cuts back to the middle, maybe gets forward progress short of the, just short of the four-yard line. We'll give him two on the carry as Hannah's gets up gimpy after a hard tackle fourth down. by Xavier Stanley and company. Yeah, fourth down now, ball just inside the five-yard line. Well, what do you call here, Coach? You've seen the Rocks here the last several weeks. Uh, it would not surprise me to see the same type of thing there where you put the different wide receivers out and maybe some motion and let Hannes pick it out. Now, they're going to go high in the backfield with Almarez and Starr. Starr the tailback. Almarez will go in motion. Almarez will set up now offset to the right in that eye. And, and timeout Barnesville. Blake Allen quickly sprinting out to get the attention of the line judge, and we'll get that timeout with 7.02 to play in the second quarter. We will stay right here for this break right here while we catch our breath. 14 all the score here in the second quarter, nearly halfway through. Our ABC Sports coverage tonight of Shamrock Playoff Football brought to you by Barnesville Hospital, Belmont Savings Bank, the Corner Pharmacy, Flag Floors, Lorenz Custom Engravings, Village Hardware and Rental, DQ of Barnesville, Rumor Loudon, Barnesville Do It Best, Doan Ford, West 40 Auto Sales in Cambridge, WB Green Insurance, Southeastern Med in Cambridge, Smithburger Realty, and Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance. Our thanks again, Brett Klein and Andrew Dunlap on our web stream side. We're, I think we're approaching somewhere near 1,500 views here just about here for the night. Yep, and just the Shamrocks after that timeout are going to try a field goal. 22-yard field goal straight on here, Evan Lowe. And low only is one of six on the year so far. This ball is plenty good. And inside the left upright. And the Shamrocks break the tie and recapture the lead. So Coach Blake Allen liking his chances and trusting his kicker. And a short field goal attempt is good to make it 17 to 14 for the Barnesville Shamrocks after the 21-yard Evan Lowe field goal to make it a three-point lead for the Shamrocks. We'll step aside for 30 seconds as our ABC Sports coverage continues of a good football game here in week number 12. Shamrock 17, Pirates 14. We'll be back. Buying a new home? Exciting. Figuring out how you're going to finance it? Not always so exciting. But that's what Angie Bradley and her team at First Ohio Home Finance are here for. Conventional loans, FHA loans, VA loans, USDA loans. Sure, it sounds like a lot of abbreviations, but Angie and her staff not only know what they all stand for, they can help you find the one that's right for you. So let the team at First Ohio Home Finance and Bradley Lending Team crunch the numbers and take care of the paperwork so you can concentrate on turning your new house into your new home. Call them at 740-421-4808 or visit them 1008 Woodlawn Avenue, Cambridge. Back on 93 B and V and on YRP TV and Facebook Live. Glad you're with us here for this one here. Boy, how about the uh, this uh, so far the first quarter and a half has not disappointed. I'll tell you a lot, a lot of points on the board. 
And this a squib is a squib kick. kick and nearly an onside kick. It's going to be fielded at the 43-yard line of Wheelersburg on that rumor Loudon squib kickoff. And yeah, one of the up linemen got a hold of the ball there. That's uh, that Xavier Stanley, Stanley yep. on that and went out of bounds. So Wheelersburg's going to be right back, pretty good field position. I, I think you know, you know, they're not wanting to kick the ball deep to uh, Lattimore and, and the other back there, but you know, you give up good field position. Now Wheelersburg's going to put the ball in play at the Barnesville 46-yard line. I don't think he wanted to maybe go quite that short with it, but but some that's a credit to the lineman yep. for making the play and not letting the ball bounce around. Yep, from the pistol. Eli Jones gives it up. That's Derek Lattimore, and he has been one tough customer to handle. A 205-pound bowling ball will get around the left side for another first down for Wheelersburg, just short of the Barnesville 40-yard line, and he'll pick up another 13. Yeah, I'll tell you what, good speed there to get outside. We've seen him do that a couple times. As you said, you know, you know, you know, not a, not a tall kid, 5'9", 205, and he's going to be tough to bring down oh. out in the open field. Well, you got that low center of gravity, and you've got those and, and he's legs kind of, like yeah, tree trunks. And he's a kid that's involved as a rusher and a receiver in a lot of what Wheelersburg does. Jones from the pistol. Derek Lattimore, the big 205-pound back on his right side, fakes the handoff. Jones is going to throw it for the first time. Throws down the middle. He's got a man. Costello's back there in coverage. Knocks it away and nearly come up with the interception. And on the deflection, pass was nearly caught inside the five-yard line. But Duker Costello was right there to break up the play on Wheelersburg's first pass attempt of this first half with 6.40 remaining. Uh, Costello's been strong in the backfield all year. I had six or seven inter interceptions for the year. He was right there with the receiver. Um, ball was knocked away. Bounced up in the air for an instant there. I thought it was going to be able to be played by the receiver, but it fell to the ground. You know, but a you know, pretty good call Wheelersburg with the way they've been running the ball, you know, going deep on first down. They probably feel like they can get you know, the yardage coming up. Number 32, Caleb Arthur, the tight end, was the intended target on that last play. Detling safety trying to blitz in and bring down a tackle for loss as the running back, Lattimore, escapes that and will get outside. That's Eric Lattimore. We'll see where they put it down there. Near the about first the, down mark, yeah, just short of the 31-yard line. Wait, do they reset the chains over there? Would, this, would this be a good time to mention the chain gang over there? Because uh, we were told we don't it. mention them. Yes, okay. we might as well. Okay, we mentioned them. <laughs> the mayor will be greatly pleased. So I wasn't going to mention any names <laughs> or anything there. but uh, Third down and one after a gain of nine. We've got a timeout, an official's timeout, stopping the clock with six and a half minutes. 17-14, Shamrock's on top by uh, somebody, a field goal. I think equipment situation here for, for Barnes looks like, looks like Hannes you know, coming out, maybe a, a shoe problem. So the safety leaves. Easton Little, a senior at 5'10", comes in to replace a number 12. A lot of attention that CJ is getting on the sideline to get whatever the equipment is repaired. Third down and a long one from the Shamrock 32-yard line. Again, you know, two chances here for Willisburg yep. to get the yardage. Eli Jones out of the pistol. He's got big Derek Lattimore on his left side. And in motion, they counter it to the right side. Lattimore's got plenty of space and has the first down around the right tackle on a gain of four. Inside the Shamrock 29, we'll call it three yards, but a first down again for the Pirates as they move the chains again, trailing by three, nearly halfway through the second quarter. You know, the different runners here, Willisburg already has three different running backs at over 30 yards rushing, and we've only played a quarter and a half. Derek Lattimore remains in the backfield behind quarterback, senior quarterback Eli Jones out of the pistol. Three receivers. Jones to throw it again now for the second time. Again, deep down the middle of the field. He's got a man open over the shoulder. Cash, did he get it? Yes, he did. Touchdown, Wheelersburg. What a grab by Creed Warren. Warren, and that's going to be 29 yards. And Wheelersburg has taken the lead back. Halfway through this second quarter, 20 to 17 with the point after pending. Now that was a, a really a dandy catch on the back part of the end zone. There, that was, you know, I wasn't sure he was going to be able to get in bounds there, but he did, and from here he was easily in bounds. And the point after attempt here by Connor Eastup. Out of the hold of Creed Warren, who just caught that touchdown pass, and he nails another one perfect on the year. Yeah, he kicked that one about halfway back down to, <laughs> to Barnesville Elementary School. <laughs> and so the Wheelersburg Pirates back on top, 21-17 here at Shamrock Stadium. We'll step aside on ABC Sports. Our Rocks football playoff coverage continues after this word. 
Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their patrons Buckeye Mutual Policy. Call today at 638-3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. Thanks again to our video crew, Brett Klein, Andrew Dunlap on the camera, Dave Davidson and Jeff Stevens. I'm sitting in tonight for Mark Brown up at the state cross-country meet here tonight. Glad you're with us. 21-17, Wheelersburg's back on top. Topsy yep, turvy yep, first half. Yep, what a well-thrown ball there by the big 6-4 quarterback. You know, his first completion of the night in two attempts. And this Wheelersburg kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon from the 10. Costello again. Uh, Detling. Or Detling this time, excuse me, yep. Eight instead of seven. He's up to the 30. Up to the 30-yard line. 20-yard return for Detling. Now, I'll count these up, you know, when we get at halftime. But Wheelersburg has just run so many more plays than the Shamrocks here. But, you know, Barnes was kind of done a little bit more. You know, 21-17 Wheelersburg. We're still 5.56 left in, uh, in period number two. But, you know, Barnes a long way to go here. They're going to put the ball down at the 29-yard line. And C.J. Hannis back in the game. And that mentioned that last play. C.J. Hannis had just come out of the game to have some equipment repaired. And then the touchdown pass over the middle where he's normally the free safety. Yep. Good point. Four receivers for Hannis. He'll keep the ball, covering it with two hands. There's a good outside block by Detling to spring Hannis for about five or six more yards. Near a first down, he'll gain about eight or nine, does the Barnesville quarterback. I think Detling maybe a little shaky as he gets up there. He put a, a big hit on there, pick up about four yards. You know, but that's a, a real good hit. And Detling's not a big dude at 5'7", 140 pounds, but got uh, in the way of the uh, defender. Take that back. About a, that's about an eight-yard pickup. Yep. Ball at the 38-yard line on the right hash. Five and a half minutes and counting down in this second quarter. Wheelersburg 21, Barnesville 17. Out of the eye formation, Hannes, the quarterback, keeps it himself. Not a big push by the Barnesville offensive line as they were just going for a quarterback sneak first down. Forward uh, progress might still have it. It uh, looks like the official from this side goes in and... They say yes. Yeah, they did signal that. So they gets up, he gets the two yards that he needs. And let's say that puts Hannes now six carries, 73 yards in the game. Of course, he had the big 42-yard run for touchdown you know, for the first Barnesville score. So Lazier, Johnson, Meade, Butler, and Taylor performing well, although outsized up front. And Hannes now working again with trips receivers to that left side. They throw a quick screen out to Luke Detling. He's got some space. Good lead block by Costello and company. Detling escapes a tackle at the 48 and continues to the Wheelersburg 40 and down at the 36-yard line for a big game. That's going to be about 25 yards by Detling, and what an individual effort. And Detling asking for a substitute to catch his breath. Brady McIntyre, the sophomore, will come in to spell him. And what a great <laughs> couple of plays on this drive already here by Luke Detling, uh, uh, both on a block and now on the reception. And I think maybe he's still feeling that block a little bit there, but he didn't mm. show it there on a nice catch mm. and run, breaking loose from a couple of tacklers. He really did a nice job. It's funny, when a high school kid gets a football in their hand, they tend to forget about that stuff. First and ten play, and the handoff, this will be Starr. Yeah, a little counter action. Starr was split out and comes back on a little bit of a reverse. And he's going to get up field and get about four or five yards. Close to five more to the 32-yard line of Wheelersburg. Approaching four minutes to go, second quarter, 21-17. Wheelersburg on top in a game that we've seen four lead changes. I tell you, just, you know, we didn't know what to expect coming in. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, when you look at it, you should have expected big offenses because both these teams have scored a lot of points this year. Four receivers this time for C.J. Hanna since Taysen Starr in motion, and they went to Starr. Good fake on the run option and Hannes just keeps it on a dive right up the middle and he's going to have seven more yards to the 24 yard line of Wheelersburg and another Shamrocks first down. I think you called that there you know a star came back in motion it looked like a little that jet sweep type look there but they faked that and the defense kind of went toward him and we get a chance to look at it here on our video and you can see the defense just kind of diving in there 
and Hannes just puts it up in, inside and picks up, you know, about eight yards and gets the first down now. Uh, Shamrock's in business at the 24-yard line. Corbin Wise, number 27, and number 11, Brady McIntyre, join the receiving crew on this play as, again, Hannes, the quarterback, will keep it himself, picks up three to the 21-yard line on the dive, and there's a Shamrock that is really slow of getting on his feet, and that is left guard Hank Johnson, number 50, but limps back to the huddle with the assistance of his right tackle teammate Luke Taylor. And also you mentioned those offensive linemen at different times this year. Hunter Phillips also has filled in at different mm -hmm. places there on that offensive line. But, you know, at this time of year, everybody's a little bit beat up and they're going to get up slow. But, you know, as soon as they get out of that huddle, they're ready to go. Second down and seven. Three receivers right side for C.J. Hannes an empty backfield. Under some pressure. Nice cut back inside the middle. Has a hole. And his break outside brings him down at the 19-yard line. That's a good, a good open field tackle yeah, there Creed by Warren. Yeah, Warren up with a stop after a gain of three. Well, yeah, he just come up and made him, and he hit Hannes low. He's wrapped around the legs, so there wasn't any way he was going to be able to break out of that tackle. Barnesville trailing by four. Approaching two minutes to go. Still plenty of time on this drive. Two timeouts left for the home team. And uh, Barnesville certainly wants to eat up the remainder of this first half and not give the ball back. And remember, Barnesville will have the ball to start the third quarter. We get some movement, and we've got a man for Wheelersburg jumped inside one of their defensive linemen, Jackson Willoughby, and everybody saw that one, and that's a five-yard step off. And that's only the second penalty of the game, and both have been on uh, Wheelersburg. And that's going to see when they put that down. That should be a first well, it's going to be really close to the first down. Yep, yeah, now, now they're moving the chains there. It looked to me like it was definitely was a first down, but you know nobody signaled for the chains to go ahead and move. So a new set of downs. But that puts the ball at the 14-yard line now, minute 45 left. And, again, you know, Barnes were last time settled for a field goal, and this time they really don't want to do that again. High formation for C.J. Hannes behind center. Almaraz and Taysen Starr. Handoff Starr. He's got a space in the middle. Inside the 10, cut down at the 7-yard line. Safety Jake Darling, number 29 with the stop. But not until Taysen Starr picks up another solid close to 8 yards. Clock running at a minute 20. Still Barnesville in no hurry right here. Still no, have plenty of time. No, like you said earlier, they still have the two timeouts left. You want to use up the clock. You don't want to give this Wheelersburg offense the ball back. And, you know, so you know, no real concern. And you can still get a first down here on second down in about two. Casey Carpenter, the tight end, 87, shifts to the left side. He has a nice seal block on the outside. Starr cuts it back on the inside of his block to the two-yard line. That's going to be a That'll first be down. another first down for Barnesville and a gain of about five more. And now the Shamrocks definitely in business here. The chance to take a halftime lead. Clock running, 50 seconds left. A little bit surprised here that Wheelersburg maybe hasn't used one of their three timeouts here a little bit to True. preserve time a little bit. But extra blocking tight end in Easton Little for the Shamrocks. Easton Little, Almarez the blocking back. Casey Carpenter and came out of the backfield, and now we'll have we a Barnesville that time timeout. Out. No, it's Wheelersburg. Oh, okay, Wheelersburg did call the timeout. Right. I think maybe they did not like, you know, that might have been a little bit of a different formation. It's that power, power stacked eye formation we've seen Barnesville use with Casey Carpenter as a blocking back there. And you know, definitely you know, jumping in there and Coach Woodward um, you know, calling that timeout, you know, 36 seconds left. Our coverage of Shamrock Playoff Football tonight brought to you by Schrock's Woodworking, Emory Heating and Cooling, Vision One Floors, Convenient Food Mart of Barnesville, Surgeon Construction, Box Drop Biesville, Skinner Insurance, Barnesville Val Veterinary Services, PVF Supply, and Hissom Service Center in Barnesville. Okay, I'm not getting anything come up here on the internet. We had that same problem last week All right. a little bit there. We'll get uh, hopefully a score update coming pretty soon at the moment. Uh, things are dead at the moment. We'll get a score update. Yeah, we had that problem. High school yeah, had that scores. problem last week because you probably got a lot of people here, <laughs> you know, trying to get on the internet to check scores and maybe even yeah. to listen to WBNV. Right now, uh, our Verizon signal is down here at the moment or watch us on watch us on youtube here you can do that on your phone here at the ball game yeah. again you know star and almarez and carpenter and behind hannis and that power i set on first and goal almarez powers his way off the right side of the line he is going to be stopped just a tick short of the goal line he's just short and barnesville quickly calls timeout with 31 seconds left give almarez he needed two he got one so the good news is, 
Still only second down for Barnesville. Sure, they, and they still have that one more timeout remaining. So really, uh, Barnesville in the driver's seat right here to take a, uh, a lead before halftime. I'm sure that Coach Blake Allen is reminding this crew of what happened at the one-yard line one week ago. And I'd be pretty sure he doesn't really need to remind them, <laughs> but, but he probably is. But, you know, again, that was one of the, you know, the, the crucial mistakes you know, last week where Barnesville had a chance to kind of put the ball, put the ball game away, but that turnover you know, enabled Piketon to make the play then and to stay in the game. But, you know, now, as you said, you know, Barnesville still has the one timeout left, 31 seconds on the clock. You know, it's going to be second and goal from the one-yard line. I say quarterback sneak that uh, Hannes go up under center and just tuck right in there behind Marshall Meade and the guards, either one side or the other. you got Braden Butler on the right side, a sophomore at 250 pounds, and Hank Johnson on the left side at 205 pounds. Triple I set for Hannes, and again, the quarterback sneak, as you predicted. Uh, well, I don't Backs think he got way there. In. No, no signal yet. Nothing yet. Barnesville players are saying touchdown, and now touchdown. <laughs> C.J. Hannes, one-yard sneak. Barnesville pounds it in to recapture the lead in this unbelievable first half. 23-21, Barnesville back on top, waiting for the point after attempt here from Evan Lowe to that, make it a three-point game. That coming just with 28 seconds left, and that is our uh, third touchdown along with one field goal here in the second quarter. And a heavy pressure put on Lowe with a nice kick. And it is up and good down the middle as Wheelersburg had a pretty good surge coming on the left side to attempt the block. And the Shamrocks now with back with that three-point lead, 24-21. Barnesville on top will break away for just a moment, and our Shamrock football coverage continues on ABC Sports in a moment. When it comes to the care of your pets, trust Barnesville Veterinary Services. Located at 207 North Chestnut in beautiful downtown Barnesville. They provide small animal care and emergency services to their current clients. Please call for availability. Barnesville Veterinary Services is a proud sponsor of the Barnesville Shamrocks. Go Rocks! High School Football from ABC Sports on WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield, 93 BNV. <laughs> well, we got some, uh, there are some Wheelersburg listeners on there, which good. Dave Davidson and Jeff Stevens, thanks to everyone tuning in uh, and on YouTube and Facebook Live. Now on this kickoff, Wheelersburg initially had everybody up tight. They're looking for a squib kick, obviously, with 28 seconds left. Now they do drop a couple of players back. But, you know, that's a big touchdown by Barnesville. And, you know, I, you know really they've got six guys up at the 50-yard line, Wheelersburg does, as they're expecting a squib. Kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon. We'll see what Evan Lowe does. And Lowe punches this one. Line drive kick toward the near sideline. It'll go out of bounds around the 22-yard line. But I tell you, normally you think, boy, he kicked it out of bounds. That's a bad break. 28 seconds left right there. That's not a bad play. I, it almost looked like he intentionally kicked it to the <laughs> sideline, and Coach Allen wasn't worried about whether it went out of bounds or not. I, I think that's a good play. I agree. Because and now now Willsburg could force a re-kick or they'll take the ball at the 35-yard line. So we'll see, you know, uh, official... I Bob Mills. I think that's what they're electing to do. And they're going to ask him to kick again. And I think that from the Wheelersburg standpoint, I think that's a wise move. Yep. And, and if, if Barnes wants to kick it out of bounds again, then <laughs> they may ask him to kick again or they get it at the 40. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. you know, 28 seconds left. And Wheelersburg, you know, they have two timeouts left. They're not ready to concede the half uh -uh. yet. You know, 24-21 Barnesville. A little bit of a chess match here on this kickoff. Again, brought to you by Rumor Loudon. We'll see if Evan Lowe where he wants to place the football there this time. Nine of the, even the return men are up tight around the 25-yard line, the deepest yeah, the, players. Yeah, they're, they're not convinced that Lowe is going to kick the ball deep. Creed Warren and Eric Lattimore, and this will be a deep kickoff. And, and he drills it. It's going to hit the, the 10. That's a loose ball. It's going to be picked up inside the 10. Creed Warren at the 7. Drags a couple of Shamrock tacklers across the 20 to the 22. 15-yard return for Creed Warren. That's an excellent kick by tell you Evan what. Lowe. A chess match going on right there. Advantage, Blake Allen. Because that's a good kick. It went back to the 10-yard line, bounced around. So now there's 23 seconds left. Wheelersburg is at the 22-yard line. But again, we've seen them knock off a couple of big plays here with two timeouts left. You know, it's not halftime yet. 
And Barnesville can't get complacent and uh, play too loose here either. Four receivers for Wheelersburg's Eli Jones. Rolls to his right, throws to the sideline. Caught by Creed Warren. Out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Picks up seven on the pass play. And will stop the clock momentarily with 18.2 seconds left. And Wheelersburg preserving their two timeouts. Down by a field goal, 24-21. Yeah, 18 seconds left. Puts the ball down just past the 30. You know, second down and about two. Again, and... Coach Allen, not real happy on the sideline. I don't think he liked the personnel. He's going to spend the last time out. He started to send somebody in, and, well, Barnes will get the time out. I'm not sure there. They, they all, I think, I think that, that maybe Coach Allen felt like they only had 10 men on the field, and he sent a player in, but they did have 11 on the field, and that was going to be a 12. So, um, you know, call that time out then. They had one left so that they do not give up any free yardage, which – Obviously, you don't want to do with 18 seconds left in the half. Uh, no doubt about it. 24-21 game, Barnesville on top of Wheelersburg. Our coverage tonight of Shamrock football here in the playoffs brought to you by Belmont Savings Bank, the Corner Pharmacy, Lorenz Custom Engravings, Flag Floors of Barnesville, Village Hardware and Rental, Dairy Queen here in Barnesville, Rumor Loudon, Barnesville Do It Best Hardware, Doan Ford, and Barnesville Hospital. You know, Detling, you know, with free safety, we see Starr also dropping back uh, at the two deep, two deep safety look here by Barnesville. And, and Costello also will drop back. Jones to throw with four wide receivers over the middle. Deflected and intercepted by Barnesville. And C.J. Hannes with the interception at the 47 up the Wheelersburg sideline inside the 35 to the 33-yard line with just eight seconds left and no timeouts, but the deflected pass gets a turnover for the Rocks D. Well, that does two things. One, that takes the ball away from Wheelersburg, and with eight seconds left, no timeouts, uh, extra wide receiver going to go in the game right now. We're going to see how strong C.J. Hannes' arm is because I would say this one's going toward the end zone. And Wheelersburg's going to send a lot of white shirts and orange helmets back toward the goal line. We Corbin also, Wise. Yes, Corbin Wise is just checking yep. in with three receivers right and one left. Wise is on the left side. Three more, Star, Detling, and Costello. That's a throw on the slant, and it's not enough for the first down. Detling and makes the grab at the 26-yard line. That'll be a seven-yard pass play, but time has expired here at the end of the first half. And the Barnesville Shamrocks, after giving up what was an easy opening touchdown drive by the Pirates of 64 yards, they weathered the storm and have come away with a three-point lead. I'll tell you, the Shamrocks have responded real well. Now the concern you know, is, you know, with another half, you know, the Wheelersburg size wearing down by Taylor. Barnesville, has, we, we said they need to play a near-perfect game. First half, I'm not going to say it's perfect. It, it's been very close yep. on that. You know, you're doing a great job of the Shamrocks, and, you know, and they lead 24-21. But, and, and Barnesville does get the ball to start the third quarter. So lots to talk about here in our halftime report, brought to you by WVU Med Barnesville Hospital here in Barnesville. And we'll uh, add up the numbers here. Jeff Stevens will work feverishly on the statistics. We'll get uh, some other scores from other games going on as we get uh, our signal back here on the, the score stream. And uh, lots to talk about here as we will step away now for a few minutes. Our halftime score again from Shamrock Stadium, Barnesville 24 and Wheelersburg 21. And our ABC Sports coverage of Shamrock playoff football in week number 12 will continue after these words. I was sitting in my car and it wouldn't start. I lifted the hood and the engine was falling apart. What would I do? My eyes filled with tears. Then on the radio, I heard of West 40 by pay here. Where for a little money down and a little each week, I could have a car, nice, shiny, and sleek. So I walked in the door and I put the money down. Now I got a nice car that I can drive around. West 40 by pay here will help rebuild your credit. The corner of Dewey and Route 40 in Cambridge, don't you forget it. West 40 Auto Sales, corner of Route 40 and Dewey Avenue in Cambridge, is home of the guaranteed credit approval, with most loans approved while you wait. Go to their website to fill out an online loan application, west40autosales.com. You'll also find their weekly special listed there.
PVF Supply has over 40 years experience in the oil and gas industry, but they're here to help local businesses, farmers, and homeowners as well. They supply pipe, valves, and fittings, as well as water hookups, culvert, and drain pipe. They're a local family-owned business serving the community. Stop by and see them Monday through Friday, 7 until 4.30 at 39737 Marietta Road in Caldwell, across from Anderson Propane. Or just give them a call at 740-732-0511. Again, that's 740-732-0511. And be sure to like them on Facebook. Surgeon Construction is leading the way in commercial and industrial construction. This is Jason Emps, and we are committed to providing an exceptional construction experience from pre-construction through project completion. Our success is measured by exceeding our clients' expectations. See our past and previous projects at Cambridge YMCA and New Educational Center at Jurassic Park and FMJ Shooting Range, just to name a few. Find us online at surgeon.construction and like us on Facebook. Surgeon Construction. We'll take it from here. Lorenz Custom Engraving is proud to support high school football. Call Lorenz Custom Engraving for engravings on your firearms, slides, revolvers, Glock frames and P-Mags. Also parts serialization, engraving on titanium, stainless steel, aluminum and brass including gold and silver watches, pendants and other keepsakes and jewelry. Lorenz Custom Engraving. 225-1882. In today's marketplace, you have many choices for insurance. WB Green Insurance, a representative of Westfield Insurance, is committed to providing you with excellent coverage for your home and auto at a fair and competitive price. Westfield has been in the neighborhood for over 150 years, providing peace of mind and quality insurance products through independent insurance professionals. Sharing knowledge, building trust is Westfield's pledge to their customers. Call WB Green Insurance today. Hi folks, Jeff Riggins, the Mattress Man from Box Drop Byesville, 168 South 2nd Street in Byesville. We have all sizes of mattress sets, king, queen, full and twin. We have adjustable bases. We have models ranging from budget to luxury and we see folks by appointment. So call today to set a time to come in, 740-584-2623. Check us out on Facebook and Google, Box Drop Byesville. This year, the Southeastern Med Cancer Services team is celebrating 30 years of being accredited by the National Commission on Cancer. Earning this accreditation and maintaining it for three decades is a testament to their team's quality outcomes, dedication, commitment, and care for their patients and community. Learn more by visiting seormc.org today. High School Football from ABC Sports on WBNV, Barnesville, Woodsfield, 93 BNV. Welcome back to ABC Sports, our halftime score, Barnesville 24, Wheelersburg 21. Before we get to Jeff Stevens' comments and run about halftime stats here from both teams, we'll give you the scoring rundown. Wheelersburg Took the opening kickoff uh, out to the 36-yard line, 64 yards and 10 plays. And it looked like uh, Wheelersburg gave Barnesville the early punch in the mouth with uh, just three minutes and 58 seconds off the clock. Capped off by a three-yard Landon, uh, Landon Hutchison touchdown run for Wheelersburg. The point after by Estep gave the Pirates a 7-0 lead. But then the, uh, the following kickoff, Duker Costello, a uh, big play threat for Barnesville, uh, come up with a very clutch 54-yard kickoff return, which brought the ball to the 40, the 42-yard line of Wheelersburg. And on the very next play, C.J. Hannes uh, is able to break three around the left tackle with some uh, great seal blocking off the outside and turns in a one-play drive of 42 yards and a TD score. And the Evan Lowe point after attempt made it 7-7, just like that. Uh, 17 seconds later, Barnesville uh, about six minutes uh, prior near the end of the first quarter with just under two minutes remaining. Casey Carpenter on a tight end screen option pass through a 36 yard bomb to Taysen Starr to the right corner of the end zone. And again, the low extra point made it 14-7 Barnesville at the end of the first quarter. Wheelersburg had an answer again with a uh, another very good kickoff return of about 40 yards starting uh, that drive deep in Barnesville territory. A Derek Lattimore 20-yard touchdown run just 14 seconds into the second quarter. 
gave uh, the Wheelersburg Pirates the tying score with the point after making it 14 all. Martinsville was 7-0-2 remaining in the second uh, quarter. I think made a very clutch decision uh, by Coach Blake Allen at the fourth, fourth and goal, I think it was around the four yard line. Uh, decided instead of going for it, decided to uh, give Evan Lowe another field goal chance, who had only made one out of six field goals during the year, even though his point after attempts, this was basically a, a long extra point attempt. 22-yard field goal for Evan Lowe gave the Rocks back the lead at 17-14. Wheelersburg only a minute later answered with a Eli Jones 29-yard touchdown pass to Warren, to Creed Warren. Point after attempt gave Wheelersburg the lead with a 21-17 advantage. And then uh, right at the end of the half, Barnesville strung together a really a key stop and a turnover. And uh, the interception, the deflection, and then the C.J. Hanna's interception, uh, stopping a drive at the end of the first half for Wheelersburg. But Barnesville scoring with just 28 seconds left in the half on a one-yard touchdown plunge by C.J. Hanna's. And that gave the... Barnesville Shamrocks back to lead, and that is where we stand right now. 24-21 Barnesville on top in this first half of play. Our halftime report brought to you by WVU Med Barnesville Hospital. And our thanks again to our Shamrock football sponsors for this second round playoff game. And they are Vision One Floors, Convenient Food Mart of Barnesville, Emory Heating and Cooling, Shrocks Woodworking, Skinner Insurance, Barnesville Veterinary Services, PVF Supply, Hissom Service Center and Surgeon Construction. We'll take another time out. When we come back, we'll have Jeff Stevens' comments and halftime statistics of this one as our halftime coverage continues from Shamrock Stadium with the Shamrocks in front by three at the half. Most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. Today on Hey Culligan, soft water, cleaner environment. What do you say, Greg? Hey Culligan, are you saying if I have a Culligan high-efficiency water softener, I'm also helping the environment? It sounds like you're saying it, Greg, and yes you are, because with the Culligan high-efficiency water softener, you'll use less detergent, soap, and harsh chemicals, and that's good for the planet. Now you're saying it. You bet I am, Greg. Soft water and a cleaner environment is already on the way. Let us help you out with a free in-home water test from a local Culligan water expert at Culligan.com. Research shows listeners prefer a personalized experience. So to help you remember, Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance. They personalize this ad for Amber, who really misses boy bands from the 90s. Hey, girl. <laughs> I'm the cute one. Here to tell you how Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance so you only pay for what you need. I'm the heartthrob. The only thing I love more than you is saving. And I'm the other boy in the band everyone forgot about. Just happy to be here. Only pay for what you need at LibertyMutual.com. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Now located at 16050 McConnellsville Road in Caldwell, Ohio, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance Company is a mutual insurance company established in 1896 for the purpose of providing insurance coverage to rural Ohio. They offer a product to meet your insurance need, whether it is for a farm, rental dwelling, home in town, secondary or seasonal dwelling, churches, or mobile home. They partner with Grinnell Mutual Insurance Company to offer liability coverage to package with their patrons Buckeye Mutual policy. Call today at 638 3604 and follow them on Facebook at Patrons Buckeye. At Emory Heating and Cooling, one call gets it all. They provide comprehensive heating, cooling, and air quality services, including air duct installation, heat pump, air conditioning, furnace installation, and repair. Ed Emory personally provides high-quality products that are both budget-friendly and provides the results that you would expect from your high-quality HVAC system. So don't deal with a bunch of techs. Deal with the local expert in the field, Ed Emory and Emory Heating and Cooling. They also offer 24-hour services. Give them a call, 740-255-4837. I'm not buying till I check down for. 
Most of us are faced with uncertainty every day. Your job, your finances, sporting events, schooling for your children, and so much more. With so much uncertainty surrounding you, there's one auto dealership that you can be certain about, and that's Doan Ford. You can be certain that you'll always get a great deal and the best service afterwards. In business for nearly 60 years has given Doan Ford the reputation of being a strong, reliable dealership. Be certain. Choose Doan Ford online at DoanFord.com. Surgeon Construction is leading the way in commercial and industrial construction. This is Jason Emsch, and we are committed to providing an exceptional construction experience from pre-construction through project completion. Our success is measured by exceeding our clients' expectations. See our past and previous projects at Cambridge YMCA and New Educational Center at Jurassic Park and FMJ Shooting Range, just to name a few. Find us online at surgeon.construction and like us on Facebook. Surgeon Construction. We'll take it from here. Hi folks, Jeff Riggins, the Mattress Man from Box Drop Byesville, 168 South 2nd Street in Byesville. We have all sizes of mattress sets, king, queen, full and twin. We have adjustable bases. We have models ranging from budget to luxury and we see folks by appointment. So call today to set a time to come in, 740-584-2623. Check us out on Facebook and Google, Box Drop Byesville. We are back here at Barnesville Shamrock Stadium, and what a tr tremendous first half we've had on a gorgeous night for football. Barnesville leading Wheelersburg at the half, 24-21. And it's been very up and down the field thus far. Uh, we'll look first here at the Wheelersburg Pirates. And, and Wheelersburg, you know, mainly running the ball here in, so far in the first half. I have Wheelersburg for 164 yards rushing. Uh, Derek Lattimore leads the way with six carries for 56 yards. Um, also, Glover has seven carries for 38 yards. And the quarterback, Jones, four carries for 24 yards. So 164 yards rushing for the Pirates. They have added 37 yards passing on two of four. Both catches by Warren. Uh, one you know, was a touchdown reception of 29 yards. So two of four passing for the 37 yards. So Wheelersburg has 201 yards of total offense. They've run 30 plays from scrimmage. They've been penalized twice for 15 yards and has they have one interception. The Barnesville Shamrocks, who early in the game had two scoring drives that lasted one play. And you know, that quick strike offense, you know, that we've seen at different times during the year. But in that first half, Barnesville runs the ball uh, 114 yards rushing. C.J. Hannis, uh, nine carries for uh, 87 yards. Uh, he had the 42-yard touchdown on Barnesville's first play from scrimmage. And Taysen Starr has added 26 yards at seven carries. And Salvador Almaraz, uh, one carry for one yard. So that is 114 yards rushing for the Shamrocks. And they have added 110 yards passing. C.J. Hannis, five of six passing. And Casey Carpenter, one of one on a little, you know, little lateral, uh, you know, screen pass play. And it was behind the line of scrimmage. It was backwards. And then he corked a touchdown pass to 36 yards to Taysen Starr. And that was the score. And that, at that time gave Barnesville a 14-7 lead. So 110 yards passing for the Shamrocks for 224 total yards and 24 offensive plays. Uh, Duker Costello has three catches for 35 yards. Dettling two catches for 33 and Taysen Starr the one catch for 36 yards so you know fairly even on the yardage I have the 224 Barnesville 201 Wheelersburg and that's what the scoreboard says also Barnesville 24 and Wheelersburg 21 you know in a, in a dandy first half boy it's been every been uh, every bit as good as advertised and more Jeff I'm not from what I've seen from Wheelersburg in the first half with all due respect to Ethan Glover and Creed Warren and Derek Latimore, or and Eric Lattimore, if I see number two back there in the backfield, Derek Lattimore at 205 pounds, I'm trembling a little bit. And yeah, he's done a nice job. He's you know not a lot of touches, and if you look at the stats of the year, he doesn't get a tremendous amount of touches, but he's very effective in the ones he get. You know, 205, 59, but he shows you know good speed. And like I said, you know he you know uh, I don't have him with any receptions thus far, but you know, you know among his um, six carries so far, uh, three of them have went for over 10 yards. You know, and, and he's a very tough target to, to bring down. And 
I think the big advantage here, you know, that, that touchdown Barnesville gets right before halftime to give them the lead, and then they're able to stop Wheelersburg you know, with the interception, and now Barnesville gets the ball to start the third quarter, and if they can do something with it, obviously, you know, to their advantage. Uh, and as you said there you know, earlier when you were giving the scoring here, a little concern here when, when Wheelersburg takes the opening kickoff, 10 plays all on the ground, relative ease going down the field and scoring, and, and, and Barnesville people thinking, Oh boy, what's going on? Well, great kickoff return by Costello, 42-yard touchdown run by Hannes. All of a sudden, the home crowd was back into it, and they've been into it all along. Yep. And uh, and we mentioned too, you know, the, the, the nice crowd for Wheelersburg over. Uh, you know, you know, give credit to those people for traveling over three hours. You know, 73 kids in uniform in their football team, and a little over 50 people in their band. And they tell me Wheelersburg has an exceptional soccer program down there. You know, athletic tradition at Wheelersburg is great. And through the first half, you know, Barnesville shows you know, some tradition up here. And it's real good. Yep. Yeah, and you'd think for the, you know, the home crowd is hoping that with a three-hour trip that, uh, you know, maybe they wouldn't have their land legs under them so quickly. But an impressive response back yeah, from the Rocks. They've done good. You know, both teams super. You know, you know, last two weeks I've, I've been in this exact same spot here on games and went to the, to the last play of the game. And, you know, right now maybe this one will be no different. 24-21, Barnesville with the lead at halftime. They'll get the second half kickoff. And our ABC Sports coverage of Rocks Playoff Football will continue on ABC Sports, our second half kickoff, coming up after this. Surgeon Construction is leading the way in commercial and industrial construction. This is Jason Ems and we are committed to providing an exceptional construction experience from pre-construction through project completion. Our success is measured by exceeding our clients' expectations. See our past and previous projects at Cambridge YMCA and New Educational Center at Jurassic Park and FMJ Shooting Range, just to name a few. Find us online at surgeon.construction and like us on Facebook. Surgeon Construction, we'll take it from here. Some things in life are just automatic, like me, State Farm Agent Alan Hunter, offering great neighbor service plus surprisingly great rates on auto insurance. If you were to contact us right now, you'd find you could have some of those surprisingly great rates and good neighbor service right away, as in automatically. Give me or my staff, Austin, Minley, Lori, or Kelly, a call today. 740-439-5385. We think you'll be automatically happy you did. Like a good It's convenient to shop at Convenient Food Mart in Barnesville. Check out the delicious weekly deli specials. You'll find a great lunch menu Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. If you're heading to the game, Convenient Food Mart is everything you need, including wings, chips, pop, and ice, and make sure you call in your tailgate order before the game. Program your cell phone to 425-3700 for all the great deals at your local Convenient Food Mart, South Chestnut Street in Barnesville. 425-3700. Call Vision One Flooring for your next home project. Vision One Flooring can create a custom backsplash to make your kitchen stand out. They are there for your flooring needs and can create custom bathrooms. Vision One Flooring is happy to serve Barnesville's community and the southeastern Ohio area with 15 years experience. Give them a call at 296-9340. Don't forget to like and follow them on Facebook. Vision One Flooring, if you have a vision, we are the one for you. Lorenz Custom Engraving is proud to support high school football. Call Lorenz Custom Engraving for engravings on your firearms, slides, revolvers, Glock frames and PMAGs. Also parts serialization, engraving on titanium, stainless steel, aluminum and brass including gold and silver watches, pendants and other keepsakes and jewelry. Lorenz Custom Engraving. 225-1882. The Barnesville 200 Club is having a membership drive. The 200 Club was established in 1969 to support all Barnesville sports. In the past, they've contributed to all Shamrock athletic departments. Items such as football helmets, baseballs, softballs, track equipment, swim team jackets, cross-country equipment, wrestling awards, and hotel rooms for state tournament qualifiers. Current membership stands at 214 members. Help by joining the 200 Club and support all Barnesville athletes. For more information about the 200 Club, contact club treasurer Tim McKelvey or any 200 Club member. Let's go Shamrocks! Back on ABC Sports, Dave Davidson and Jeff Stevens. Mark Brown has the night off, enjoying the state uh, cross-country meet with his sophomore runner. Connor Starr. Yep. And uh, thanks for being with us here on this 
webcast here on YRP TV, Facebook Live, and on 93 B and V. Maybe just real quick here to mention a couple of scores. Winner of this game tonight will face the winner of Harvest Prep and West Muskingum next week. Our scoreboard update here by Jeff, brought to you by Belmont Savings Bank. And it, and all these scores are right about halftime, just before halftime or early third quarter. Harvest Prep leads West Muskingum 20 to nine, and those games next week will go to a neutral site. You know, so that would be announced on Sunday. But also some games of interest. Caldwell, you know, scores right before halftime and leads their game 35 to 12. If if they hold on and win, they will play River next week at a neutral site on Saturday night. River leading at halftime 35 to 6. Uh, Cambridge is trailing 14-13 in their game, and also uh, St. Clairsville trailing in their game 17-7. And Fort Fry, you know, all over Shenandoah 49 nothing. You know, in around halftime. few other scores going on. Garraway 21-0 over Ridgewood at home. And let's see. Over on the MVL side, the Muskingum Valley League, Sheridan 27, Washington Courthouse 14 at the half. And I guess I was a little surprised by the Fort Fry Shenandoah score. I really thought, I mean, Fort Fry has just been a stud all year long. They have scored a ton of points yeah. in the first halves of their games. And what I'll tell you what really tells me how good Fort Fry is, is the fact that they led Lindsley by two touchdowns in the second half and got beat on a last tail end of the game on a field goal. And Lindsley's done some outstanding things this year, beating Steubenville, among others. And I also mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, some people you know, locally here mentioned the Union Local Girls volleyball team and the Meadowbrook girls volleyball team both play regional championship games tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. And unfortunately the Shenandoah girls lost last night in the regional semifinal but you know but uh, you, know, bar, you know Union Local you know those girls made it to the state tournament last year in basketball and, and a few of the same girls now regional finals in volleyball so good luck to all of them along with the local cross country you know runners and in particular you know Connor Starr of Barnesville yep. uh, tomorrow. So we're ready to go here third third quarter Wheelersburg kicking off to Barnesville. And, you know, a, a score here could, you know, in this opening possession would, would go a long way in determining the, the winner of this game, obviously. Kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon. And it's on an onside kick. And the ball just does go 10 yards across the 50, and that's covered up by Casey Carpenter. Good hands up front as he really had to wait a long time uh, to get some space, and Wheelersburg I, I, had two or three guys around him. I tell you, it's... A couple times tonight, we've seen Coach, you know, Wheelersburg there, you know, kind of roll the Coach Woodward, you know, roll the dice. Uh, that time, the ball kind of didn't go. That his players, you said, had it surrounded, but they had to wait for it to go ten yards. And Casey Carpenter comes up, makes the recovery, and Barnesville excellent field position to Wheelersburg, 49 to start this third quarter. Three receivers for C.J. Hannes out to the wide right side on an empty backfield. And the quarterback will run it around the left tackle, has some space, and picks up about three positive yards. Brought down by linebacker Ethan Glover, number 24, after a gain of about two and a half yards, just ahead of the 47 of Wheelersburg as we start quarter number three, Barnesville up by a field goal. Barnesville offense, Quentin Lazier, Hank Johnson, Marshall Mead, Braden Butler, and Luke Taylor up front. They have done a pretty solid job here in the first 24-plus minutes of this game. Salvador Almarez now set up in the tight end spot off the right side. Hannes under some pressure, had to get rid of that one away. Just as well, that pass is incomplete to Taysen Starr. It fluttered out of, it either slipped out of his hands or maybe partially deflected as he released it. Well, he kind of had to throw that a little bit sooner than what he really wanted to, and I think he was probably just basically trying to throw it away. Um, and, you know, if Costello would have caught the ball, it probably would have went for negative yards. And I want to say this about um, Wheelersburg and the attempted onside kick to start the third quarter. I think that is respect to the Barnesville offense that uh, Wheelersburg coach Woodward saying, you know, I'm not sure we can stop them. We'll see if they can come up with a stop here on Barnesville. It's a third and eight from the Wheelersburg 47 ball on the left hash. Two receivers right. Hannah's on the play action rollout. Throwing to toward the sideline, out of the reach of Luke Detling at the 36-yard line of Wheelersburg. Creed Warren in the coverage, number 25. Yeah, pretty good coverage the there Pirates. by Warren. You know, and that's a, that's a three and out, so you know, 
the defense for Wheelersburg stepping up there, doing a great job, in which they needed to do since they didn't get that onside kick. So even though their field position may not be real great here, um, having low end to punt, you know, and they will send one man deep, and that is going to be Eric Lattimore. And everybody else up top, maybe not convinced that Barnes was going to punt the ball. And a good snap back to low. Some heavy pressure and nearly blocked. That was a heavy rush on by Landon Hutchison. Ball takes a Barnesville bounce and into the end zone. At two, I was watching the punter, and that was nearly a block and a big play for Wheelersburg. And too good a punt right there. That's a 47-yard punt, but it ain't going to be a 27-yard kick as the ball hit and, and then rolled to the end mm. zone. But it looked like you know, Lowe kind of taking his time there after the snap and, and some pretty good pressure there mm. you know, right in his face. But uh, still... You know, not not a bad situation here for Barnesville. You know, you know, at the twenty yard line, Wheelersburg, you know, at their own twenty to start their first possession here of the quarter. You know, twenty four twenty one Barnesville, just underway third quarter. One minute three seconds gone in this third quarter. Thanks for everybody watching on YRP TV and on Facebook Live. Lots of folks watching from down in the Wheelersburg area as well. Welcome aboard. Three receivers, two right, one left for senior quarterback Eli Jones, who gives it off to Derek Lattimore. And the big running back pirouettes his way across the 25 and is cut down finally at the 27, but not before Lattimore picks up seven more yards. And, and that's uh, yeah, Detling, right about uh, a little below his average for the day. Yeah, Detling comes up and makes the tackle there. That puts, uh, puts Lattimore over 60 yards rushing the ball, and he's, he's done a real good job here getting, getting several touches here. That's his uh, seventh carry of the game. And he remains in the game in the backfield on the left side of the quarterback and will have the handoff fake to him. Jones keeps it himself, and the quarterback will run for five more yards up to the 33-yard line. Casey Carpenter gets the tackle there, but that's going to be about five, six yards for the quarterback, Jones. So Jones with a first down run. And that's, and that's and gives Jones 30 yards rushing. Wheelersburg now has four different runners that have gained at least 30 yards in the game. So you cannot key on an individual here. That's just the balance that has made yep. Wheelersburg so good this year. Three receivers for quarterback Eli Jones and Wheelersburg, a first and 10 from their own 33. Eric Lattimore in motion, and he'll get the carry around the right end on the jet sweep and escapes Almarez and Detling across the 40. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds. Looks like right about there after a gain of seven. Seven. And that's his, line, yeah, that's, sorry, go ahead. that's his third carry for 19 yards. And I said he's only the fifth leading carrier for, for, for Wheelersburg <laughs> in the game. Coley step, Caleb Miller, Nate May, Joden Blackburn, and Xavier Stanley. The offensive line left to right up front for 6'4 QB Eli Jones, who gives it off again. Derek Lattimore hit near the line of scrimmage, bounces off of that man. He's like a wrecking ball going up through the middle of the line, and he has another Wheelersburg first down after a gain of seven more to the 45-yard line. And this may sound like a foolish statement here as Wheelersburg right back to the game. I'll, I'll make, that, make that comment after this play. <laughs> First and 10, again out of the pistol. Now Jones with Lattimore, gives it off to Derrick. Big hole through the center and into the secondary. First and more, 30, 25, 20. Still trying to drag him down inside the 15-yard line. And finally, it takes a few Barnesville tacklers from way behind the play to finish him off. C.J. Hannes holding on for dear life along with Duke or Costello, but there's that big number two again That's who about, has great speed. About 41 yards. And the comment I was going to make, he's 5'9", and the offensive linemen are 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 6 it's hard for the defense can't find to him. find him there. And that's right. that's that's not a negative you know, toward, toward the Wheelersburg kids. This will be a handoff this time for Ethan Glover. Glover is bottled up near the line of scrimmage. Forward progress gets him about one to the Barnesville 13-yard line. Three minutes gone here in this third quarter. Barnesville on top, 24-21. Wheelersburg looking for the tying or go-ahead score. Well, and what Wheelersburg is doing here is the same thing they did with the opening kickoff. <laughs> they went right down the field and scored their first possession here in the third quarter. Yep. Of course, keyed by that 41-yard run by Lattimore. Looks very similar. Eric Lattimore, the wide out to the near side left. Fake the handoff. They're looking over the middle. That's the tight end and caught. Touchdown, Caleb Arthur. 13-yard TD pass to the tight end. 6'4 senior Caleb Arthur gives the Pirates back the lead at 27 to 24. With 836 to go in the ball, quarter. The ball came loose also there, and Coach Allen you know, was thinking that could be incomplete, but the officials say nope. He had the he had the end zone before he lost it, and that is a go-ahead touchdown for Wheelersburg. 13 yards. So the line judge is there saying that the receiver Caleb Arthur. 
with his first reception of the night. Second time he's been targeted. And the kick is up and perfect again for Connor Restep. And so the Wheelersburg Pirates have recaptured the lead. Second, you know, they've run the ball so much, but that's the second touchdown pass of the game. <laughs> yeah. And that, as you said, that opening drive of the second half looked very similar to that in the first half, uh, just a little bit longer. You know, eight coming eight thirty-six. So you know, Wheelersburg tries the onside kick, but don't get it. But then three and out, and goes eighty yards mm -hmm. for the score. So right now. Drive. Momentum back to the visitors of Wheelersburg. And now we we were impressed how Barnesville responded early on after getting punched in the mouth on the opening drive here. They're going to have to do it a second time. You know, and that's, I mean, we've been back and forth several times here with, with lead changes on that. You know, just, and Barnesville has, has answered every, every bell thus far. Um, the one was after a great kickoff return, but they've had two, two possessions which they scored on one play drives. You know, but you know, good, you know, good deep kickoffs almost every time here by Wheelersburg as East Step. I, I believe has like nine touchbacks this year on his kickoffs. Yeah, and, that, and that's a great weapon. And, and he's a member of the soccer team that is very good. I think still playing in the regionals for Wheelersburg. And the kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon. A high deep kickoff taken by Duker at the five. Up the left hash, finds some space, slips off of a tackle. Ball came loose at the 27, 28 yard line, and I think. Oh, did Costello able to roll back on top of it, or did Wheelersburg get it? Wheelersburg says they got it. Officials are not saying anything. I think they're trying to decide if Costello's knee was down. They don't have the benefit of replay. Wheelersburg football. And I think number 29, maybe. I, I couldn't tell there, which would be, Jake, be Jake Darling. Jake Darling may have had the, he had the ball last, and he handed it to the officials. So Barnesville turnover. And obviously not what the Shamrocks wanted here as Wheelersburg's going to take over now at the Barnesville 29 after the, I believe that's the second Barnesville turnover. Mm -hmm. And boy, that's, that, that's a, a tough blow right there for the Shamrocks. This defense is going to have to step up now. And they've had difficulty stopping Wheelersburg, but they have to do it now. First down and 10, Wheelersburg inside the Rocks 30. Off the kickoff return fumble. Hand off Eric Lattimore around the right side. Barnesville's there to swallow him up, and it was defensive end sophomore Luke Taylor and company leading the charge on gang tackling of Eric Lattimore for no gain. Got some help from Detling also on that play. This is a big opportunity here for Wheelersburg to take a two-score lead for the first time tonight. Leading at 28-24 with under eight minutes to go third quarter. Still and, lots of time. And nobody's had a two-score lead in this game. From the pistol, handoff. Make the handoff to Derek Lattimore. Eli Jones, the quarterback, keeps it himself. And he's going to be bottled up for a short gain. They'll stop him around the 27, a yeah. gain of two. I was really surprised that Jones did not give that ball off to Lattimore. I think any time you yeah. got a chance to hand it off to big number two, you better give it to him. Pick up a couple. Robbie Nixon, I believe, on that along with Almaraz making that play on the quarterback. So now third down, mm. again, at the ball at the 27-yard line. We, we've seen Wheelersburg before the game trying field goals as far back as 50 yards. 41 yards is the long for East Up this year. He is six out of nine for the season. He is capable. Three wide receivers, two left. That's Landon McGraw in on the right side, and a snap, fumble, there's snap a penalty flag down. I don't even know if this play's going to count. Well, there, there, there was illegal motion. Now, that will be the question. Did they whistle the play dead, or did the snap, and the officials are going to talk about this. Bob Mills of the OVAC is there. It's an illegal shift. I think it's going to count. If the play counts, mm -hmm. that's a fumble. It's declined. It's not going to be fourth down from the 30-yard line. So that's a loss of three on the fumbled snap. But they, their tight end moved from the left to the right, and as he was resetting, one of the wide receivers was also moving, and you know that's you can't do that. You know you can't two men in motion prior and not resetting prior to the snap. So now fourth and twelve at the thirty yard line. Wheelersburg's going to go. They're going to send Creed Warren out to the right side. Eric Lattimore left, and tight end Cody Risner is in. Jones back to throw, wide open is the tight end, Arthur caught at the 18, to the 10, to the 5, and he dives, he's going to be cut down just short of the goal line on a huge pass play again with a clutch play from Eli Jones. 
and a 32-yard pass to his tight end, Caleb Arthur. Wow. That's down to the two-yard line, maybe closer to the one. They're going to the snap down. it quickly. Jones under center, trying to dive over the pile. And no signal, no signal yet. yet. I Marsville just, bottled it up quickly. And I, I think, think he did not get it. Say he's short. That's the second big catch we've seen that Arthur make here. Caleb Arthur, 6'4", 210-pound senior, and puts the Pirates right down at the goal line. Now it's going to be second goal from just inside the one. Well, it's kind of a waggle play where they send the, they kind of flood the receivers to the right side. They sent the tight end on a crossing pattern left, and nobody covered it. From the pistol, handoff. That's an easy score for the running back, Hutchison, who has his second TD run. He started the game with a capping off a touchdown run, and he has another one-yard blast now to give the Pirates a two-score lead at 34-24. I have him for two carries and two touchdowns. <laughs> That's pretty solid numbers. Four yards unofficially, two TDs for Hutchison. A one-yard on that one. And now Connor re up with the point after attempt out of the hold of Creed Warren. And Warren bobbled the snap a little bit high for him, and he's going to be taken and thrown down by Duke or Costello. And that will be a point after attempt no good. Never really got the kick off, so you, I guess you're going to say he missed yeah, the point sure after. If, Some uh, of these point after attempts, the, the misses uh, aren't necessarily uh, misses. I'm not sure if he bobbled the snap or if that was a fake the whole way. I really couldn't tell from our vantage point. But, you know, Costello comes up, makes a tackle, but it's still a 10-point lead for the Willisburg Pirates. And that might be uh, a big play. We'll see if that point, how crucial that becomes. 6-18 to play third quarter, and we'll step aside. Our Rocks football coverage here in the playoffs continues on EVC Sports in just a moment. At Emory Heating and Cooling, one call gets it all. They provide comprehensive heating, cooling, and air quality services, including air duct installation, heat pump, air conditioning, furnace installation, and repair. Ed Emory personally provides high-quality products that are both budget-friendly and provides the results that you would expect from your high-quality HVAC system. So don't deal with a bunch of techs. Deal with the local expert in the field, Ed Emory and Emory Heating and Cooling. They also offer 24-hour services. Give them a call, 740-255-4837. Back on ABC Sports on 93B and V and on YRP TV and Facebook Live. Thanks for watching and listening. Exciting playoff game here in round number two of the playoffs. 34-24 Wheelersburg. The kickoff by Rumor Loudon. And Wheelersburg gives it to Duker Costello. Costello comes away with another big kickoff return. He's outside the 45-yard line near midfield on another 41-yard key kickoff return. Now great field position, second time tonight. Yeah, so Costello's had kind of the, the good and the bad here. You know, two great returns, and then unfortunately the one prior to this was a fumble. But Coach Blake Allen goes right back to him and uh, trusts his player and comes away with another big play yeah, 40, for Barnesville. Yeah, so Barnesville's going to start their own 47-yard line. Uh, you know, let's say only three plays here in the third quarter. It was, it was three and out, so they need a, a little bit of, of an offensive possession here. You know, Barnesville now trailing by 10 points. Luke. Dettling and Duker, the receivers, handoff Taysom Starr straight ahead. Gain of one up to the 40, just short of the 49. And tackle made by Xavier Stanley. Number 51 was in there along with linebacker Ethan Glover. I'll tell you, that crowd across the way in Wheelersburg is making a lot of noise, and rightly so, mm -hmm. you know, with a 10-point lead here in the third quarter. Xavier Stanley, number 51, number 50, Cole Rhea. Jude and Blackburn 61 and Cody Risner 88 up front for the Pirates D. And they will buckle down to, on this second down on a long eight. Backs in the eye formation for C.J. Hannes. Quick throw to the left outside and mix up between Duker Costello, the receiver who was headed down deep in the, uh, in the pattern. And Hannes was expecting a quick out pass to the flat. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. You know, Costello still was going downfield. He was about five yards past where the ball was. And I think, you know, as you said, Hannes was expecting him to do just, just a, like a little three-yard out, a little stop pattern. But uh, Costello went a little bit deeper. So now Barnes are looking at another mm -hmm. third and long. And this, you know, offense. You don't want to say it's a must play, but they uh, really need it. Definitely. I formation, play action pass for C.J. Hannes. He has Detling. Makes the catch. Did he get a feed in? Yes, he did. He did. At the 38-yard line of Wheelersburg. That's a huge play. And a gain of 13 to receiver Luke Detling, who makes a clutch grab on third and long. First down, Barnesville. 
and coming down with his feet right at the line. You know, real nice job of getting the feet down there by by that. I mean, that's that's difficult at five foot seven. He's not a tall receiver. These receivers are not tall kids, and to be able to receive a high throw. And I, I thought he was going to end up with one foot on the sideline out of bounds. It had, to be, it had to be very close. He kept it in somehow. Two receivers left for C.J. Hannes and gives it to Taysen Starr out of the eye. And the D line for Wheelersburg Schmidt. stuffed that play for a gain of one. Penetration, Cody Rizner was back there first for the Pirate D. Approaching five minutes, third quarter, and a ten-point game for Wheelersburg. Yeah, just the size of Willisburg's defensive front. And we, we've seen Barnes you know, run some nice plays and get some yardage up the middle. But you, know, you, you, you concern yourself if you're a Barnesville fan with the, the, the physical size of Willisburg wearing you down mm -hmm. as the game goes. Alvarez, number five, going in motion right to left behind the line of scrimmage. Quick throw out to the flat. That's caught Luke Detling. Detling, nice open field tackle. I think that was Creed Warren out there. Yep. Yes, Warren yes, got was. the ankles of Detling and kept that at a short gain of three. A very good job up then because we've seen Detling in the past, you know, catch that and break across the middle and, and, and run the ball for some positive yardage. I think he turned that into a 25-yard gain earlier in the first half. And a nice job, uh, good open field tackling by the secondary of Wheelersburg. 4-14 Four, yeah. and counting third quarter. Hannes is now 7 of 11 in passing. And as, as Detling's fourth catch. Trips receivers, Taysen Starr in the middle between Costello and Detling. Rolling right, throwing is C.J. Hannes. Wide open, Detling caught at the 25. And barrels his way, tucks his head down, and takes on two Pirate tacklers. First down. For a Barnesville Shamrock first down at the 23. Well, Detling now has five catches. But, you know, they're turning that field and turning it into first down at the 23-yard line. That's a great job, though, by the receivers. Costello and Taysen Starr on the inside of that trips formation, really pushing the secondary back deep and opening a lot of space for Detling. Yeah, even though you're not the primary receiver, you know, you're the other receiver, you're running a good pattern to take the defense out of there is very important. Two receivers, four of them now. As now Taysen Starr comes in motion left. Hannes keeps it on a quarterback keeper. There's a gaping hole up the middle, and he's cut down at the 15-yard line. And Risner and a late may flag. pick up a personal foul penalty as he throws Hank Johnson, number 50, to the ground at the end of the play. And so there was some extracurricular activity happening there at the behind the play as C.J. Hannes runs for a gain of close to nine. That's going to be half the distance to the goal penalty, and that will be another first down for Barnesville. So Shamrocks thus far have responded. That's going to be... Wheelersburg's third penalty. That one's about going to be about an eight-yard step off as it's half the distance to the goal. Yep. And to my count here, I don't believe Barnesville has been penalized yet, which is really, which is really amazing. I mean, yeah, a that, lot of times, a, I mean, they, at, at times this year they've been hurt by the they've penalty. been hurt by penalties and, you know, really last few seasons. Yep. But you know, tonight they've been hurt by really one of their two turnovers really hurt them. Mm -hmm. But you know, first and goal from the seven. Backs in the eye on first and goal. Three ten to go, third quarter, down ten. Handoff, Starr off the right side, cut down at the four, and penetration by linebacker Ethan Glover, number 24, the 195-pound senior with the grab, and a gain of three for Taysen Starr. Yeah, Taysen's had you know, tough going here tonight. That's 10 carries for just 32 yards. He's had to earn Taysen. every one of those 32. You know, he's, you know, he's definitely had a tough go of it tonight. And Hannes, meanwhile, is just under 100 yards for the night. Now again, two receivers wide left, two wide right. Detling and Costello to the left side. Taysen Starr comes in motion. They'll snap it on the pistol to C.J. Hannes. Hannes covering the ball with two hands, plunges over the right side of the line, down to the, near the one-yard line. Another three-yard pickup for the quarterback. And look, again, they're trying to spread out that defense well, a little and bit. It looked like Hannes was stopped there, but he kept the legs pumping and got himself an extra yard or so. So now it's third down and goal with the ball about the one-yard line. I think you can give a lot of credit there to the right guard, Braden Butler, the 250-pounder. Yeah, I think Braden Butler, a nice extra you know, surge. along with you know center Marshall Meade and, and tackle Luke Taylor over there doing, doing a really nice job. Two minutes remaining third quarter, 34-24. Wheelersburg on top, but Barnesville knocking at the door now with a third and goal. Hannes. Quarterback sneak, got it, touchdown, Shamrocks. That's Hannes' third touchdown of the night. Second one yards quarterback sneak. That coming at 152 left third quarter. 
And Barnes will now have an extra point away from pulling to within three points. 34-30, extra point pending. Detling with the hold. Snap behind him a little bit. Nice job getting that one down, and Evan Lowe is perfect down the middle. And a very key extra point miss by Wheelersburg a moment ago on the bobbled snap. And we have now a three-point game again. 34-31, and a great one here at Shamrock Stadium. We'll break away as our ABC Sports coverage of high school playoff football continues in a moment. Skinner Insurance was established in 1935. They have over 87 years of experience in the insurance industry over three generations of agency owners. They are an independent agency but their main carrier is Grange Insurance Company. They offer all major lines of insurance including auto, home, farm, motorcycle, boat, RV, business owners and life insurance. Skinner Insurance is located at 777 East Main Street. Call them at 425-1012 or visit them online at SkinnerInsurance.com. Best of luck to the Shamrocks. Our thanks again, Brett Klein, our YRP TV director and cameraman Andrew Dunlap, Dave Davidson sitting in for Mark Brown, and Jeff Stevens here, and we got a dandy tonight. 34-31 Wheelersburg now in the third. Anybody was listening last couple of weeks, you know, I talked about, you know, during the first part of the season, you know, I seemed like I had a series of, of dead games to broadcast, but this is the basically the fourth week in a row that I've had a dandy. No doubt. Evan Lowe with the kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon. From the 40, he'll send this one deep, and that will be Creed Warren backpedaling at the 10. Coming up the right hash mark, has some space, eludes one man. Now Casey Carpenter finally wraps him up past the 35 at the 36, and, and he body slams him down in front of the Wheelersburg sideline. No flag that I saw. And the Wheelersburg crowd is erupting. <laughs> I, I, I see a couple of guys in the stands over there in their orange sweatshirts. They're, they're up yelling and screaming. But no flag down, you know, that's an open field tackle there by Carpenter. And, you know, you've got a guy wrapped up around the shoulders. You've got to, you've got to pull him down. And, and the offensive player is still fighting. You know, I think all too often we've seen it in high school, we've seen it in college football, and even in the NFL here we're seeing defenders being penalized for yeah. tackling. But still, you know, pretty good return there by yep. Warren. He gets out to the 35-yard line. So Wheelersburg leading by three. Minute 42 left, third quarter. 25-yard return. Here comes big Derek Lattimore again as he just bounces off of green tacklers and picks up good first down yardage, close to five more and the big 205-pounder. And they never did get him on the ground. You know, he stopped <laughs> you know, there, and his forward progress was stopped. How you know, in the world would you? But except with a you know, that's a five side yard, cutter. You know, five-yard pickup, and Lattimore is well over 100 yards. Now I have him at... Uh, I have him at 114 yards. Well, I'm telling you, if number two's in the game, I better have at least two or three guys across that linebacking core spying on him. And coming in, we I had him just in the stats. I had just for 36 carries for the year. Well, he's going to get one more here. Bounces it outside right and steps out of bounds after a short gain on the Wheelersburg sideline around the 43. They'll mark him down after a gain of yep. close to three, but a third and two coming. Yeah, Brady McIntyre kind yep. of forced him out there, but that's a pickup still, you know, of a, of a good three yards. Third down to Wheelersburg with a three-point lead. 58 seconds left here in the third. 34-31 Pirates. Out of the pistol, Eli Jones. Lattimore behind him. Gets the handoff, has some space. That's not Lattimore. In fact, that is Ethan Glover. Glover into the secondary with big first down yardage into the Shamrock end of the field at the 41-yard line. And a big gain of close to 18. Yeah, Glover, we haven't heard a lot out of him here for a while, but you know, that's another very good game. Graham, I have him over 50 yards. Derek Lattimore back in the backfield now as 40 seconds of down in the third quarter. Derek Lattimore gets the carry again. Casey Carpenter meets him up high, and boy, you can't tackle that young man up high or you're dead. And, and he'll he pass just, it to the 34 at Barnesville. He just pushed the tacklers down the field, and that's going to pick up you know, nearly eight yards. Yep. And Wheelersburg will not have to run a play here if they don't want to. Looks like they're going to be content to let this third quarter run out with 15 seconds remaining, and they will take a 34-31 to 31 advantage to the fourth quarter as we'll step aside here on ABC Sports. Fourth quarter upcoming on 93B&B and YRP-TV as our Rocks playoff coverage continues in a moment. Here's a home comfort tip from Rumor Loudon Incorporated. The weather sure can be odd in the Ohio Valley, but one thing for sure is you will need your furnace eventually. Things can happen over the summer that affect your furnace operation. 
So here are some tips to help if your furnace doesn't work at that first startup of the season. Be sure your flues are clear. Bird and bug nests, even thick spider webs can block your flues. The safety kicks in and won't let your furnace ignite. For propane or oil furnaces, make sure you have fuel in your tanks. Also be sure a fuse didn't blow or a switch get turned off during the summer. Remember which mode you're trying to operate in. We often have them to use the furnace air and the air conditioner in the same day. Also remember you always turn the thermostat up to be warmer and down to be cooler no matter what mode it's in. Check condensate drains for high efficiency gas furnaces to be sure they're not clogged with mold. And of course, check your filters and cleaner changes needed. If you require service, please call Rumor Loudon in Barnes or St. Clairsville, but remember these tips and they may save you money. They'd have it in them. Well, you remember when they weren't back on 93 B&V and on YRP TV, Jeff Stevens and I were just looking over some of the, uh, the other scores going on. Our Doan Ford and Barnesville 200 Club scoreboard update. Okay. And again, you know, Harvest Prep, who gets the winner of this game, is leading West Muskingum 26-16 in the third quarter. And as you know, we talked off the air there, West Muskingum, it would appear, is giving them a battle. Caldwell winning big, 49-12. Um, also, Cambridge trailing by a point, 14-13 in the second half. Start of the fourth quarter, Derek Lattimore, big run, bounces off of Almaraz tackle at the 28-yard line, down the sideline, could be gone, he's in, touchdown. Wheelersburg Pirates. 34 yards. Penalty flag is down, Jeff. At the 24-yard line on the Wheelersburg sideline, and Coach Cooking. Rob Woodward is begging <laughs> for this flag to come back. Yeah, the flag's there. And come this, back. I think everybody's walking back. That's not going to be a touchdown. It's going to be a Wheelersburg penalty. It's the flag's laying at about the 21-yard line, and maybe a holding call that helped him get out around the corner, and that is the call. They'll take it back to the 31. So instead of a 34-yard run, mm. it's going to be about, a, we'll give him 13 yards. Oof. And a big break for Barnesville there. Penalty number four, I believe, against Wheelersburg tonight. And uh, really a couple of these. The, the illegal block on the kickoff return and that one right there, the biggest of the four. Yeah, they've, you know, not, you know, four penalties at this point in the game is not a huge amount by, by most game standards, but you know, say Ooh. Wheelersburg has lost some big yardage, and there you lose six points, you know, or probably seven points uh -huh. off the board. No you doubt. Know, on that, but it puts it back to the 34-yard line. Mm. Big break for Barnesville, second and a long two. And Derek Lattimore again goes to work. He's Bounces outside the left tackle. He's got an easy first down inside the Barnesville 20. He's going to try it again. <laughs> Why not? It's, so, so it's still about, working. So he gets about 14 of those yards back. And Barnesville right now really just has no answers for big number two, the 205-pound back, Derek well, Lattimore. And, you know, if you're on the Wheelersburg side, you know, you give a carry every once in a while as a change of pace, which has been effective. But, you know, he's over 150 yards for the game. And if you're Wheelersburg, you got to continue to ride the big man. Creed Warren, the receiver to the right side. Two more to the left for Eli Jones. Again, handing it off. This is Lattimore, another big hole left side. He's going to waltz into the end zone for a Pirates touchdown. 20 yards, and I'm not sure he was touched on his way through the left guard and left tackle. Well, Derek Lattimore is going to rest well on the three-hour-plus ride home, no matter who wins or loses this game, because that puts him now over 170 yards rushing and his second touchdown. Point after attempt coming for the Pirates. Connor East up out of the hold of Creed Warren. And so he gained all that yardage back. It just took him a couple extra carries to get it. <laughs> Low snap back to Warren, gets it down this time after bobbling the last snap, and the kick is inside the right upright and good for Connor Easta. And down at the right side, that one's about halfway back to Interstate 7. Uh-huh. 41-31, Wheelersburg back on top by two scores, a 10-point game as they answer. Barnesville has had an answer all night long. We'll see if they've got another one in their bag of tricks when we come back in this fourth quarter from Shamrock Stadium. No need to go out of town for your hardware or rental needs because of Village Hardware and Rental in downtown Barnesville. They have the tools and supplies for your seasonal projects. So stop by today at 265 South Chestnut and see those selection of Case Knives, Melissa and Doug Toys, Valspar Paints, and so much more. Village Hardware has an indoor lumber yard and rentals to help you tackle any project, big or small. Shop smart and shop local with Village Hardware and Rental. Go Rocks! Dave Davidson, Jeff Stevens, along with YRP TV director Brett Klein and our cameraman Andrew Dunlap. 
Back to a 10-point game here now, Jeff, for Wheelersburg. Well, you said we'll see what kind of answer Barnesville has on that, but the real problem is Barnesville's going to need two answers because they trail by 10 points at 41-31, but they're still 11-24 on the clock. And the kickoff by Connor Restep brought to you by Rumor Loudon. Pooch kick. And they're not going to kick it to Costello again. It's going to field it at the 31-yard line. It's Kobe Jones, I think. Yep, one you're right. Freshman. The freshman. Yep. You know, it was a nice Jones. job, one of the short Man took it about the 30 there and gets back up across the 35 to about the 38-yard line. So decent field position here for well, uh, Barnesville to start. And there's a case, too, where, where Wheelersburg has been burnt by Duker Costello twice for big returns, so they weren't about to let him touch the ball uh, again. And, you know, yeah, Barnesville's got pretty good field position, but after the two big returns by Costello earlier, it was well past midfield. So... I think Wheelersburg's yep. glad to put Barnes on play at their own 38-yard line. 54 yards and 42 yards. A couple of the big returns. He did fumble a kickoff return early in this second half. And we'll see what Barnesville does here on play action from the eye. Throwing to the far sideline, Duker Costello comes back. A nice job for the receiver to come back to the ball at the 46-yard line and make the grab for an eight-yard pass play yeah, from C.J. Yeah, Costello is well past the yardage. He's probably 15 yards downfield, and Hannes throws the ball to an area there, and Costello comes back to catch it, you know, which basically is running the defense off and coming back. A yeah, really nice job. Picks up about eight yards. Costello's fourth catch. Corbin Wise, number 27, comes in as an extra receiver. He'll line up to the left side of the formation. Duker Costello goes to the short side right on I've, this second yeah. and two. I've got Hannes at 9 of 13 throwing the ball. He's had a nice evening. I formation, quick handoff, Almarez. Easy first down for Barnesville as the fullback dives for a gain of close to five just on the Wheelersburg side of the 50. Yeah, just, just Almarez's second carry of the night. But, uh, you know, good job short yardage situation. Gets his... You know, about five yards, gets his first down, so Shamrock's across midfield. Willoughby and Glover in on the stop. First down and ten, Shamrocks. Yeah, just under 11 minutes left in the game. Yeah. They don't need to rush, but they they still got plenty of time here. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't get away from your game plan you know, at, at this point, but you do need to have a steady drive. Hannah's under center with the eye. And a quick throw to the outside right near the Wheelersburg sideline. That's a nice catch by Costello to keep a, at least one foot in bounds and stretches out to make the catch. A short gain picks up close to th about three. four, about three, three and a half yards, just short of the 45-yard line of Wheelersburg. Still a positive play. Again, just kind of throwing to an area there. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with a you know, three-yard pickup. Also, and what you're doing too with this short game, short game, short game is now you're setting them up for a possible long throw mm -hmm. with Costello or Detling on a little stop and go type pattern. Detling is wide left, high snap back to Hannah's. Hannah's snags it down and runs forward. Short gain picks up about two, two and a half yards between That's the 44 and 43 yard line of Wheelersburg. It'll be third and four. That's Stanley had him wrapped up there, you know, for after a short gain of about a, about two yards. Yep, Hannah's has been a slippery character tonight, really, for Barnesville, much like Derek Lattimore has on the Pirates side. Well, uh, you know, Stanley plays that right defensive end, and he has done a good job there. And you got to think that those outside players are probably doing a little bit of a spying yep. on the quarterback. Staying in lanes. Third and five play out of the eye at the 44 of Wheelersburg. Play action roll out, C.J. Hannah's. Flutters the ball to Almarez, the fullback, and that's a big-time hit by the... One of the linebackers, that is tight end turn linebacker Caleb Arthur with a huge yeah. bounce of Almarez at the 43. And we've seen Arthur make a couple of big catches here in the second half. He came up, made that hit hmm. there, and that's a very short game. Pops a good shoulder into Almarez, who's or, no small I'd character say, or, himself at 250 pounds. Say, or did he even gain any yards on that? Gain of one. And now fourth down and four. Barnesville needing a first down badly here, just under nine and a half to go in the game, down 41-31. Yeah, you, you Barnesville cannot come up empty in this possession. Out of the pistol, four receivers. Hannah's under big pressure. Ball's deflected, and it's going to be incomplete. And the blitzer, Jake Darling, the 190-pound junior safety, came in on a blitz, got a piece of that ball as Hannah's at only five foot nine. Jeff had to unload that one again uh, early. Yeah, nothing he could do there is Darling was in there. And, you know, Darling only stands about five foot 11, but he was right in Hannah's face, hands in the air, and you know, that play was a disaster as far as, and mainly because of the way Wheelersburg played it. You know, coming with that outside pressure, you know, I think it was just the right defensive call for, for the Barnesville play call. 
So Barnesville turns it over on downs, and that's nine minutes left in the game, and, and Barnesville trailing by ten points. Now, mm -hmm. if, if we haven't seen much out of the Wheelersburg ground game earlier, we're about to see it now. Well, Barnesville's <laughs> defense is going to be tested now. They'll have to come up with a stop. And they have run the ball extremely well all night. And here is Derek Lattimore yeah, yeah, again. Guess, guess who? Off the left side, and he drags green tacklers with him about an extra two yards. They had him hit around uh, about a yard ahead of the line of scrimmage, and Lattimore still manages to pick up four to the 47-yard line with the ball in the middle of the field. And under nine minutes to go and a 10-point game for the Pirates. Yeah, and, and not knowing, of course, you know, the individual game stats, you know, there based on what we had as stats for the year on the running game for Wheels. But i got to think that this is Lattimore's best offensive game as far as a runner. You know, he's about 175 yards. Certainly you know, the, far. the statistics you would think would do that. I mean, he's got about 25-30% of his season tonight. Yeah, he's 646 yards coming in. Another carry here. Bounces through offensive lineman. Still loose. Oh. Breaks a Duker Costello tackle at the 30. 25-20, 15-10 into the goal line, and they can't bring him down. Touchdown, Derek Lattimore. 50, 53 yards. Yes, unbelievable run. Lattimore absolutely refusing to go to the ground, and Barnesville tacklers trying to get him up high, and that is just not going to work. And Wheelersburg may be in command of this game now after a dogfight in the first two and a half, three quarters. It's now 47-31. That's the third time that Lattimore has been into the end zone and very unofficial on that. I have him for 17 carries and now for uh, 228 yards. Again, the point after attempt for Connor Restep out of the hold of Creed Warren and the kick is up and good. And Wheelersburg now in the driver's seat and is eight minutes and 18 seconds away from another playoff win. They lead it 48-31 over the Shamrocks. Barnesville's got to an answer now when we come back on ABC Sports as our Shamrocks playoff football coverage continues. Barnesville, do it best. 140 South Chestnut in downtown Barnesville is a full-line hardware store featuring electrical, plumbing, paint, hardware, and lawn and garden departments. They provide chain sharpening, window repair, pipe cutting, custom color matching, and key cutting services. This fall, stop down to Barnesville, do it best for steel outdoor power equipment, including trimmers, chainsaws, and blowers. Barnesville, do it best has a best rewards program where you get one point for every dollar spent. 140 South Chestnut, Barnesville, do it best is a proud sponsor of the Barnesville Shamrocks. Back on ABC Sports and Jeff Stevens, it's now or never for the Barnesville Shamrocks now down 17 points with just over eight minutes to go in the game. Well, this big offensive line is Wheelersburg, Cole Step, 6'5", 250, Caleb Miller, 6'2", 260, Nate May, 5'11", 275, Joden Blackburn, 6'2", 245, Xavier Stanley, 6'5", 220, are just opening some holes and Mr. Lattimore, Derek, is running through it Woo. like crazy. He, he just he is making a it. career of it tonight. Kickoff by Rumor Loudon is bounced at the 16-yard line, comes to a stop, and Luke Detling picks it up, and he could be off to a big return across the 50-yard line and a touchdown saving tackle by the kicker, Connor Restep, at the 46-yard line. That play looked like it was going nowhere, and Detling picks it up late and returns it for 40 yards. And the, the coverage had gotten down so far that once he broke through the first wave of coverage, he had people there. And, you know, we've talked about the East Step, the Wheelersburg kicker, and how, how good a place kicker he is. And there he just showed he could tackle too. But, you know, you know somebody might say not a bad tackle for a soccer player. Uh, that was a lunge. Uh, he would have got a red card for that <laughs> in but, the other sport. <laughs> but, he, but from Wheelersburg's standpoint, he saved a touchdown. Yes, he did. Or at least delayed it. Four receivers for C.J. Hannes. Quick throw to the right flat. That's caught by Duker Costello. And he'll have good yardage on first down and 10. But you know. Or is that Taysom Starr? Excuse me. Uh, might be. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that's, uh, that is Taysom Starr. Yes, that mistake. was Taysom. That is yes. number one, not gets, seven. Gets about six, seven, six, seven six yards. Seven, yeah. But uh, Willisburg's content on allowing. Quick throw. Th C.J. Hannes finds his receiver. That's caught by Brady McIntyre, the sophomore, with his first reception. He'll have a Barnesville first down on the throw to the left out. About a nine, the 30. nine, ten yard pickup. Barnesville working quickly with seven and a half minutes remaining in this fourth quarter, down by 17. 
Four receivers for C.J. Hannes out of the pistol. Rolling to his right. Good protection. Under some heat. Throws toward the sideline and overthrows everybody. Taysen Starr, the intended receiver, inside the 20 of Wheelersburg, second and 10. Now, even though the play isn't even on the pass before with the completion to McIntyre, you know, Wheelersburg still very content to allow those six, eight, ten-yard catches you know, because the clock continues to run and stop now on the incomplete pass. You know, 7.25 left in the game. Wheelersburg leading by three scores, 48-31. Second down and 10 for senior quarterback C.J. Hannes and company who – don't want to end their season just yet. Yeah, Corbin, Call it the 30 on the left hash. Corbin Wise in with the play here. He's going to be wide left, along with Costello to the left. Puts Detling and McIntyre to the right. And C.J. Hannes, they're trying to set up a quick screen. Look out, that's picked off. It's intercepted by Wheelersburg at the 35, and that is Xander Mowry, the sophomore, with an interception as they were looking to set up Looked like a middle, kind of fake in the middle screen, setting up a screen to the right side. Kind of a little bubble screen, and the ball was a little bit high, and, you know, Wheelersburg comes in, makes the interception, and C.J. Hans made the tackle out in the open field because that could easily have been a, a, a touchdown return. And with 7-16 left in this Wheelersburg ground game, just, you know, in high gear, mm. and things are not looking real good for the Shamrocks here thus far. Boy, they yeah. had captured some momentum back, and... Turnover number three tonight, is it, for Barnesville? Uh, I think so. That's the second pass interception. Second interception, the fumbled kickoff return by Costello earlier. And the handoff this time, Glover off the left side. Again, good yardage on first down. Picks up a solid four just ahead of the 50-yard line. Close to five. Salvador Almarez was out there with Starr. So the clock running now under seven minutes to go. And... We will see now Wheelersburg work, work with the slowest tempo that they have worked with all night. Well, you, you can be pretty certain that they're going to take all the time in the world you know, as they you know, get the plays off here. You've got a quarterback who's been down the road many times before. You know, he's a senior. He knows how to read the play clock and take it down now down to five seconds. Back split on the either side of Eli Jones. The carry again to Glover around the left tackle. Slipped as he went to make his cut at the 46 of Barnesville. Picks up three. And he'll be two yards short of the first down. And it was Marshall Mead, one of the closer guys in the area with the stop. Well, Barnesville now in really in a must-stop situation here. Well, this second half, we just, you know, again, we'll check the yardage here, but the, the Wheelersburg ground game in the second half is just, you know, just dominated things here. And it, it was something really concerned about, just the, the physical size of the Wheelersburg line is really starting to wear Barnesville down. Again out of the pistol, Jones gives it up. Derek Lattimore, who else? And Barnesville still struggling to bring him down, and it takes about half the football team to bring him down across the 40 at the 38-yard line. That's about eight and yards. And a big run of eight more yards for Lattimore, and that's kind of a – an average run for him tonight. First down, Wheelersburg. The clock running at 5.45 and up 17. Well, they give it to somebody else for a couple plays there to let Lattimore have a little break there. And then, <laughs> yeah, but well, then, you know, get a big first down. And you know, say so now that clock continuing to tick down, you know, near five and a half minutes left here in the game. And, you know, 48-31 Wheelersburg. And, again, Wheelersburg still in the huddles. The play clock's down to 10. Coming up at the end of our game, play of the game by Barnesville Dairy Queen and our patrons Buckeye Mutual drive of the game along with our post-game report. Derek Lattimore on the handoff, left side. Quentin Lazier pulling him from behind and slugs him down to the ground with Lattimore's maybe his shortest gain of the night, only picking up two to the Shamrock 36. I think maybe Lazier had a hold of his shirt there trying to pull him back. And at this point, uh, Coach D.J. Butler and... Blake Allen and Bryce Allen, neither, none of them care how you do it. Just get them to the ground somehow. You know, I, I, I have Derek Lattimore now with 19 carries for, for, for the game. So he's getting quite a workout, and he's made the best of him as he's now over 230 yards rushing. Yeah, he has been the man of the match for sure. Clock, uh, play clock down to five on a second and eight from the 36 of Barnesville. Extra, a couple of extra tight end blockers in there. That's a different ball and carrier, off, I believe. I think, is that Glover? Let's That's see. That's Darling. Number 29, yep, yeah. that is right. Jake Darling with his first handoff. So, what, he gets eight different three, ball carriers three, now four. tonight for Wheelersburg? <laughs> At least seven. Yeah. Gain of three more. Third down, a short five. The ball at the left hash mark between the 33 and 32-yard lines of Barnesville. Clock approaching four minutes in the game. It's still a 48-31 
Wheelersburg advantage. Now Barnesville had that 24-21 lead at the half, but Wheelersburg has really come out and controlled the line of scrimmage here in this second half. That they have. Barnesville needs a stop here on third and five. They fake the pitch right. Jones keeps it himself. Gaping hole up the middle into the secondary and a first down inside the Barnesville 15-yard line before being slung down by Easton Little in the secondary for Barnesville. Another Wheelersburg first down with 345, and that may be the final nail. You know, getting you know, nice pitch fake there and turn up inside. We've not seen Jones run the ball out of the quarterback spot a lot, but he has been effective. Now that's, you know, I have him for six carries for 38 yards. And, and you mentioned earlier that two-yard gain by Lattimore may be his shortest gain of the, of the day in 19 carries. And it was. <laughs> you, you, you were right. <laughs> it sure seemed like it. And it was, that was the case. Caleb Arthur now an extra tight end coming in motion to the left side, providing a lead block. This is Glover again. Glover inside the five, and he will score again. Around the left end for another Pirates touchdown with 3.04 to play in this fourth quarter. 14-yard run. And right. this Wheelersburg muscle up front has flexed it here in the fourth quarter. You know, oh, by the way, Glover now, by my count, has 80 yards rushing. You know, we kind of forget about him because of what Lattimore has done. <laughs> so Wheelersburg, somewhere in the neighborhood of over 350 on the ground, maybe close to approaching four bills. Creed Warren gets the hold down on the PAT, and it's perfect again by Connor Eastup. 55-31, Wheelersburg now. Looks like they're going to be, that long trip back to Wheelersburg is going to be a little bit shorter tonight going home. Uh, as we said in, in the pregame, you know, the tradition of Wheelersburg as far as being in the playoffs, I, I think the playoffs in Ohio have been going like about 41 years, give or take a year or two, and, and this is like the 33rd or 34th time Wheelersburg has been in the playoffs. You know, they their success for the year is, is really rated by how many times they make regional finals or state final fours. You know, so th yeah. this is a, a tradition-laden program, and they have shown tonight, you know, why they're one of the favorites in the region despite a 7-3 record when you look at the teams they've lost to. And there's, you know, obviously now it looks like they're going to get a, a shot at probably Harvest Prep at a neutral site next week. Mm -hmm. And you know that Willisburg would like to get by that one and get another shot at Ironton. And, and we'll our try, we'll fourth quarter scoreboard update brought to you by Village Hardware and Reynolds. Uh, let's see. Fort Fry all over Shenandoah, 63 nothing. Wow. Uh, Harvest Prep has exerted itself in the second half. Now 41-16 lead over West Muskegon. Probably very, very similar to what's happening here, I'm sure, where Harvest Prep, you know, with probably some physical size just wearing things down. Yep. Kickoff brought to you by Rumor Loudon, taken by Luke Detling at the 16, running across the field right, escapes one tackle, puts his head down, and is hammered down after a 20-yard return just past the 35-yard line. And the Wheelersburg Pirates up 24 points, 55-31, with just under three minutes to go here in the contest. Well, even though, you know, obviously, you know, it looks like the Shamrocks are going to drop this game. Boy, what a year it's been for Barnesville with such a young team. And, you know, to be 11-1 and one and not sure where it's going to fall. There was still a mathematical possibility that they could get an OVAC championship depending on what happened with Lindsley tonight. And Lindsley was trailing early in, in the game. So, but, uh, you know, it, it's been a year that I think Barnesville did not, a lot better than what they expected. High snap back to C.J. Hannes. Bobbled it for a moment, picks it up. Now flexes out to the right side, and he'll just tuck it and get a few yards. And that's a great, uh, great save by C.J. Hannes, the senior. Smart play there to avoid a... A potential uh, game-ending disaster. He does pick up about two yards or three. Ball at the 38-yard line. Clock running with two, two and a half minutes. Getting another score update here from our colleague Mel Pasut over in Steubenville at Harding Stadium. 31-0 Steubenville over Hartley. Bishop Hartley. Steubenville winning over Hartley. Yes. yes. Impressive win not, for not, Big not Red. The, not the Steubenville winning is, is a surprise, but you know, I think but that margin... And we're going to have a five-yard step off here for legal procedure against Barnesville. And unless I forgot to write something down, that may be Barnesville's first penalty of the game. That's what I've got. So a second down and about 13 now. Ball put back to the 33-yard line. I know a lot of people in the Valley would like to see that St. Clairsville-Steubenville matchup later on, but St. Clairsville was trailing. 
And a big throw down to Luke Detling. Great job in bringing the ball down. That is a catch as... And we've got a late, late, late flag in oh. the middle of the field here. That's about a 10-yard catch there for mm. Detling. This is a flag well after the play. Well, Detling leaped up in the air and made a sensational catch as Creed Warren and, and drilled took, him at the And took 43. a big hit. So we'll see what Bob Mills, the official, has. It's a dead ball foul, a personal foul against Barnesville. Oh, players and, ejected And somebody's too. been ejected from the game, and that is a... I think that's Hank Johnson. And that is a disaster, and he's getting an earful from Coach Allen down the sideline. But that's ten, a 10-yard ten gain for Detling on the play, but then the 15-yard penalty. So the left guard, Hank Johnson, has been ejected from the game. Not sure exactly now, they what should, happened behind they the play. No, it was not a first down, so this is going to be 15, 15 yards. 15 yards from the catch. From into the, the catch, catch, right? And then back. And Barnes was going to call a timeout. Yeah. And I, I'm not an expert on things that's going on by any means here, but I think you know Coach Allen's going to talk to his team now and, and say, "Hey, boys, you know that's that let's have some class here. You know we're, we've been outplayed tonight by a team that's that's better, and that's not do something foolish. Mm -hmm. Win with humility and lose with dignity. 205 left in the fourth quarter. Wheelersburg 55 and Barnesville 31. We'll step aside for a quick 30 second break as our Shamrocks football coverage continues in a moment. At WVU Medicine Barnesville Hospital, we're delivering the right care at the right place at the right time. Whether you're injured in the big game or backyard family fun, we're ready to get you back to performing your best on the field or off. Barnesville Hospital offers state-of-the-art diagnostic imaging services like x-rays, a new CAT scan that provides the greatest degree of resolution, clarity, and definition in our images, and our MRI that can help our team of physicians diagnose torn ligaments and other tissue injuries. WVU Medicine Barnesville Hospital is proud to be your community hospital, delivering the right care at the right place at the right time. Back on ABC Sports, Dave Davidson, Jeff Stevens, Brett Klein, our YRP TV director, and cameraman Andrew Dunlap. Thanks for watching and listening on our FM 93.5 and on our Trem live stream. Tremendous amount of, uh, of viewers on our Facebook and, and YouTube live yeah. stream tonight. You know, hey, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate every one of those, plus our sponsors, and we'll mention them again another time before we head out. Quick throw over the middle. That's caught by Corbin Wise. He makes the grab at the 45-yard line, and he'll have a Barnesville first down, a gain of 17 for Corbin Wise. And that'll stop the clock momentarily with 156. And good time out there by Coach Blake uh, uh, Allen there to settle his guys down and to get them refocused. Well, you still want to play football till the end. You know, if you can get to the end zone to make the score look a little bit better, obviously. Four wide receivers again for C.J. Hannes out of the gun. And he's going to roll to his left, and he's got some heavy pressure rolling on him now. He escapes one shoestring tackle and manages to get outside for a gain of one. He was chased out of bounds by linebacker Braden Maxey, 6'4", 200-pound junior. Tell you what, for a Division V school, I mean, this roster is loaded with kids that are just huge. And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're a Barnesville fan, now so many times you hear people say after you lose, well, you hope that team goes and gets beat. Well, you know, if I'm Barnesville, mm. I hope Wheelersburg wins the state championship. Wins it all. You better believe it. Absolutely. You know, the farther they go, you <laughs> think it, it took one of the best to take us out. That's right. That's exactly right. Second and nine. Rocks with four receivers again for C.J. Hannes. Almaraz in the backfield. No pressure there. Quick slant. Caught by Detling on the left side. Spins out of a tackle at the 38. And forward progress to the 35 of Wheelersburg. Again, 18 more yards That's for De Luke Detling, who pads his stats. That's Detling's seventh, seventh catch of the night. I want to tell you what, very quietly, he has had himself a dandy game tonight, really. And that comes on top of that huge play that he made last week, mm -hmm. you know, to help set up the game-winning touchdown. Lesson wides again. Yeah, 120 now on a moving clock. Hannah's rolling right. Receivers covered down the field. Now breaking outside. Duke or Costello again. Nice job coming back to the football. He'll have... That's Star. That's, that's Taysen who's oh, now okay. outside there. Wow. It, well, <laughs> it looked like a Duker move. Sorry, Taysen. He makes the catch. That's a gain of nine. He's going to be stopped just short of the first down, and Blake Allen will elect to use one of his three timeouts with 106 to play in this fourth quarter. Martinsville's not going to quit here until the end, and they are fighting for more points. And when the play is on the opposite side of the field from we are at number one and number seven are, are hard to, to, to tell the difference. Well, that seven there. usually is scrunched up. Yeah, and, and, and in these situations, you know, Starr goes out as a flanker along with Costello. But, you know, yeah, now 106 left. 
you know, Barnes would like to get one more score on the board. We'll take a look at our Village Hardware and Rentals scoreboard update. As we said, uh, Steubenville with an impressive win at Harding Stadium, 31-0 over Bishop Hartley tonight in Division 4. Also in Division 4, uh, Sheridan 48-20 over Washington Courthouse. That game was early fourth quarter. Uh, Columbus East with a 20-13 lead on Cambridge in Columbus. Garraway 21-6 over Ridgewood. That's a final. Harvest Prep rolling it up in the second half now on West Muskingum. Harvest Prep will have the winner and will have uh, Wheelersburg next week. Harvest Prep up 47-16 on West Muskingum. Uh, Fort Fry an easy win tonight. Caldwell has uh, beat Sayudaville East 56-12. And Caldwell and River are going to play next Saturday night. And that will be another shootout we expect. C.J. Hanna scrambling for his life. Nice job running through some Wheelersburg pass rushers. Now escapes down the far sideline to the 15, inside the 10. Nice run again by C.J. Hannes, and he's not going down that senior, the feisty senior going. He's going to get about. Uh, for another big play. Uh, he's going to get about 18 yards, it looks like. Going to put him out about at the 9-yard line. That's a 17th carry now for 124 yards for C.J. Hannes. First and goal at the 9, 53 seconds left. And uh, coming up here in a matter of moments, our Barnesville DQ play of the game and our Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance drive of the game. We'll talk about those and more. And the snap to C.J. Hannes, quick throw to the outside. He had to hurry that one again. Good pressure outside coming around both edge rushers. And it's incomplete to stop the clock with 49.9 seconds, a second and goal. Ball over on the, all the way over on the right hash mark at about the nine. Three plays here to get, uh, to add some more points onto the total. Still none that, Barnes will nothing to be ashamed about here tonight. I mean, they're the higher seed, and you're going to think, well, you know, Bar you know, they got outplayed by a lower seed, but, yeah, but that's not really. Barnes will le led this game at halftime, and just, you know, the, f the, f the physical advantages that Wheelersburg had the second half, he really showed. C.J. Hannes, quarterback keeper around the right side. Still carrying pirate tacklers with him inside the five near the four. Gain of five for the senior quarterback. Timeout taken by Blake Allen and the Rocks with 43.6 seconds left. And while they're doing that, let's, uh, let's put you on the spot here, Jeff Stevens. We haven't done that yet tonight. Let's look at our Patrons Buckeye Mutual drive of the game. And as you think about that, uh, Patrons Buckeye Mutual, our sponsor tonight for our drive of the game. What do you got? Well, I think you go with almost any possession that Wheelersburg had in the second half that was effective, but I'd go with that opening drive of the third quarter. We were thinking you know, the same thing. You know, on that, which resulted in a 13-yard touchdown pass you know, to, for the go-ahead touchdown. Um, you know, Caleb Arthur was on the receiving end of that. So I think, you know, that opening drive when they got the lead and then they did not give that lead up. I think that has to be your mm -hmm. drive of the game. I agree. Our drive of the game is sponsored by Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance. And Barnesville now trying to punch in what would be its fifth touchdown of the game if they can pull it off here and, and you'd end like, their season on a high you, note. You would like to think you know, that four touchdowns and a field goal would be enough to win a game, but you know, they was just, we're, we're, we're out personnel tonight. Hannah's from the pistol. Under pressure, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to be sacked as he was looking to throw it outside to the corner to Duker Costello, but he was he's going to lose a couple of yards there by Caleb Arthur. He'll lose two back to the six. So a fourth and goal now for Barnesville. Clock running with 25 seconds, and no timeouts remaining. And we'll see Barnesville with one last chance here this season to get a touchdown. Hannes from the snap under heavy pressure again. Scrambles outside right. Lobs it for the end zone and incomplete to the back corner of the end zone. Taysen Starr was the closest man back there. Lost his footing as he was diving for the ball. And it falls incomplete with 9.8 seconds left. And Wheelersburg will have its ninth win of the season here in just a moment. Yeah, you and know, you know, you know, you know, for the people that's tuned in you know, down at Wheelersburg, we know we have some of them on our live stream. That, I tell you what, you know, very good football team, and they did not flinch when they got behind in the first half. They came out the second half and just methodically 
took control of the game with the running attack and you know did what they needed to do. I hope this offensive line and Derek Lattimore has something for Harvest Prep next fr next Friday night. Uh, hopefully Lattimore didn't use up all uh, all of his good fortune tonight because boy did he uh, really make a living for this black and orange attack of Wheelersburg. Barnesville fans with a standing ovation for their Shamrocks and rightly so they will in their season at 11 and 1 and Wheelersburg moves on to play Harvest Prep now with a 9 and 3 record after a 55 to 31 victory. Now, and what can you say? A great year for the Shamrocks and unfortunately all great things have to come to an end because in every division you only have one team that walks off the field at the end of the game a winner and, and seven in the state in the seven divisions. So you know winning a state championship was going to be tough and this is Barnesville's first year back up in Division Five, you know they did everything they needed to do, and tonight they were just beat by a better team. No doubt about it. Uh, congratulations, Blake Allen and all the staff. Super season from the Shamrock Green as and, they and, go down and defeat tonight. And, and the positive is, I, I think seven seniors on the team, and, and some of them only play, you know, you know in roles on that. So you have a lot of juniors and, and sophomores coming back, mm -hmm. you know, in the future. You've got some key people to replace. But you know, as I said, the Shamrocks. I think if you told anybody from Barnesville that you'd be 11 and one this year, back at the first of August, they would have said, "Where do I sign?" Yeah, no doubt. Barnesville Do It Best Hardware is our post-game report sponsor. And we will have that post-game report for you as Jeff Stevens will total up the numbers. We'll give you uh, the other scores of other games going on around the area. Our post-game report from Shamrock Stadium here on ABC Sports will get underway. Sponsored by Barnesville Do It Best in a moment. Some things in life are just automatic. Like me, State Farm Agent Alan Hunter, offering great neighbor service plus surprisingly great rates on auto insurance. If you were to contact us right now, you'd find you could have some of those surprisingly great rates and good neighbor service right away, as in automatically. Give me or my staff, Austin, Minley, Lori, or Kelly, a call today. 740-439-5385. We think you'll be automatically happy you did. Like Buying a new home? Exciting! Figuring out how you're going to finance it? Not always so exciting. But that's what Angie Bradley and her team at First Ohio Home Finance are here for. Conventional loans, FHA loans, VA loans, USDA loans. Sure, it sounds like a lot of abbreviations, but Angie and her staff not only know what they all stand for, they can help you find the one that's right for you. So let the team at First Ohio Home Finance and Bradley Lending Team crunch the numbers and take care of the paperwork so you can concentrate on turning your new house into your new home. Call them at 740-421-4808 or visit them 1008 Woodlawn Avenue, Cambridge. When it comes to the care of your pets, trust Barnesville Veterinary Services, located at 207 North Chestnut in beautiful downtown Barnesville. They provide small animal care and emergency services to their current clients. Please call for availability. Barnesville Veterinary Services is a proud sponsor of the Barnesville Shamrocks. Go Rocks! Your home and your car are likely your two biggest investments. Protecting them from unexpected damage is a prime concern to WB Green Insurance. They are proud to represent Westfield Insurance, a financial service organization that provides insurance products for your home, auto, and business. Sharing knowledge, building trust is Westfield Insurance's pledge to their customers, along with personalized claim service that's fast and friendly. To learn how Westfield can help with your insurance needs, talk to WB Green Insurance today. Flag Floors of Barnesville has been delivering superior quality flooring solutions for over 30 years. They feature carpet, vinyl, wood, and ceramic flooring and cater to both residential and commercial customers. They also have custom cabinets, Kensington High Performance windows, and Liberty safes, including handgun vaults. Flag Floors even has a complete line of rental items to help you tackle those jobs and a wide range of cleaners and polishers. It's all at Flag Floors, 324 South Chestnut Street in Barnesville. Call 425-3344. Visit them online at flagfloors.com and like them on Facebook. Are you looking to buy or sell a home? Smithburger Realty can help you find your dream home or sell your current home. Don't be intimidated by the process. Melissa Smithburger and Crystal Vogler will be there to walk you through each and every step of the way. Melissa and Crystal are natives to the area and active members in the community. With their local expertise, they can make your home buying and selling experience a successful one. Smithburger Realty is proud to sponsor high school sports. 
PVF Supply has over 40 years experience in the oil and gas industry, but they're here to help local businesses, farmers, and homeowners as well. They supply pipe, valves, and fittings, as well as water hookups, culvert, and drain pipe. They're a local family-owned business serving the community. Stop by and see them Monday through Friday, 7 until 4.30 at 39737 Marietta Road in Caldwell, across from Anderson Propane. Or just give them a call at 740-732-0511. Again, that's 740-732-0511. And be sure to like them on Facebook. Hissom's Service Center and Towing is your one-stop shop for your vehicle. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. After taking care of your car's body work at Hissom's Body Shop, stop and fill up the tank at the full-service fuel pumps with diesel, off-road diesel, and non-ethanol gas. Stop down to Hissom's Service Center and Towing Service Department located at 827 East Main Street for oil changes, alignments, brake work, and anything else you need. Hissom's Service Center and Towing is proud to be a sponsor of local high school sports. Hissom's Service Center, where they'll clean off your windows and pump the gas for you. <laughs> this, this piece is on. Dave Davidson and Jeff Stevens back to Shamrock Stadium. Thanks a lot, Brett Klein and Andrew Dunlap, our YRP TV crew. Thanks for joining us on 93B&V and on uh, YRP TV and Facebook Live. Tons of uh, viewers tonight on our web stream. That's always good to see. Uh, so I think somewhere about close to 2,000, I think, at one time uh, on that side. So thanks for Barnesville area listeners, Wheelersburg area viewers, all that uh, stuff. We really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one tonight. Certainly Wheelersburg is going to have a little bit more enjoyment, but uh, a lot of the Barnesville fans here uh, sticking around and appreciating the efforts now uh, watching the uh, senior uh, band members, football players, cheerleaders walking uh, the field here for the final time. Nothing to be ashamed of here from the home crew. They had a uh, sensational season. No, and, and as we said earlier, you know, you know and, and, and some of my, my, my friends you know, here in Barnesville might object to me saying this tonight, you know, you know so if we play them again next week and stuff, but hey, folks, if you played them again next week, the same thing would have happened. Wheelsburg is a better team, and they proved it the second half. And that is, that is not a negative toward Barnesville because they played a good football game tonight, but they just were beaten by a better team. That uh, was a team that uh, uh, big offensive line up front. That was a concern uh, for the coaching staff, a concern for us. And uh, and what we didn't realize even uh, is the, the number of weapons that they have with the ball, including quarterback uh, Jones, Eli Jones, who – Probably is you know the least noticeable of the whole bunch, but really uh, uh, a field general out there really directing it all. Yeah, he he ran the show, and you know, uh, you know, and, and you, know, you can tell why because of the number of weapons they have and the big offensive line. They didn't throw it a lot when they had to, but they were very effective when they did throw the ball. And not to change the subject here, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm really glad to see you know several Barnesville fans you know hanging around here after the ball game and, and saluting you know the the, the seniors, uh, say the cheerleaders, the band members, and the football players as they walk the field and showing their appreciation for for those for those mm -hmm. students. And it's good that uh, Mother Nature cooperated tonight too. I mean, we're at November fourth. And we're enjoying temperatures today in the low 70s. Yeah. And, uh, you know, nobody's out here can see their yeah. breath. Uh, so, so a lot of people night. tonight in, in, in short sleeve shirts yeah. and, and even short pants out. And, and, and then we're in November. And, you know, the weather this year for high school football has been great with a couple of exceptions. Yeah, you can't ask for anything more. Let's take a look here, uh, partner. Our uh, Barnesville DQ play of the game. We were talking about this during the commercial break. Yeah. There's lots to choose from. Well, here. and that's it. And, and Willisburg. And neither team had you know that spectacular huge huge play and stuff but you know let's let's give a little love to Derek Lattimore who the score was 41 31 in favor of uh, Wheelersburg and he knocked off a 53 yard run for a touchdown part of his big night and that you know put the, the, the Pirates up by uh, by 17 points and mm -hmm. pretty well sealed the game yep. you know there so you know that 53 yard touchdown run by Derek Lattimore you know would be our play of the game I like it Play of the game brought to you by Barnesville Dairy Queen. And uh, let's take a run through of the uh, individual stats here unofficially. Yeah, just, you know, we'll look at Barnesville first. And, and you know, I so said they end up tonight with 379 yards of offense. You know, and that's, that's, that's a lot of offense, you know, <laughs> you know in, in, in a game. So, but they end up, uh, I have them for 165 yards rushing. Uh, C.J. Hannis is going to have 127 yards rushing and 19 carries. And Hannes also found the end zone with uh, three rushing touchdowns. Uh, Taysen Starr, you know, had a tough go tonight, uh, 10 carries for 32 yards. Uh, Salvador Almaraz gets uh, two carries for six yards. So I have the Shamrocks at 165 yards rushing. And I have them at 214 yards passing, uh, 18 of 26 for the game. Uh, Hannes is 17 of 25. And then there's the one big play 
which was uh, uh, Casey Carpenter, probably next year's quarterback for the Shamrocks, uh, with the touchdown pass of 36 yards to to Star. You know, for part of that, so the Shamrocks go uh, for 214 yards passing, 379 yards uh, total. Uh, Luke Detling gets seven catches tonight for 89 yards. Uh, Duker Costello gets uh, five catches for 46 yards. Taysen Starr, three catches for 52 yards. Almarez with a catch. Uh, McIntyre with one catch for 10 yards. And Corbin Wise with one catch for 18 yards. So 214 yards passing, 379 yards total offense for the Barnesville Shamrocks. But, you know, the name of the game you know, there tonight was, was Wheelersburg as they end up the game with 422 yards rushing. That's over, 100, that's over 260 yards in the second half. Um, the, the 422 yards rushing, they're, they're paced by, you know, as we mentioned, Derek Lattimore. You know, he carries the ball 19 times for 238 yards and three touchdowns. And he had over 170 of those yards in the second <laughs> half. And you don't, didn't really notice it tonight there, but uh, Ethan Glover carries the ball 12 times for 80 yards, and probably nobody's sitting here even paid any attention to him in, in a late touchdown, so 80 yards for him. Um, Eric Lattimore gets six carries for 38 yards. The quarterback, Jones, eight carries for 28 yards. Uh, Warren, six carries for 31 yards. Uh, I have Hutchinson with two carries for four yards, and Darling with a carry for three yards. So... 422 yards rushing, and then the Pirates had 78 yards passing on four of six for 500 yards of total offense in, in the game. Uh, two catches there for Arthur, um, and one of them got him a touchdown, and the other one set up the touchdown. Uh, Warren, two catches for 37, and Arthur, two catches for uh, 41. So 500 yards of offense for, for Wheelersburg, and you know they just pretty well dominated things, especially that second half. And if you're Barnesville, you don't beat people with, that put 500 yards of offense out there. And you know Wheelersburg, you know, did that tonight, and that's why they win the game, 55-31. Committed three turnovers tonight, Barnesville did, but really only one of those. The the fumbled kickoff return really was the costly one. The other one. Uh, you know, the first interception really turned into, it was a long third down, turned into basically a 32-yard punt, essentially. Turnovers really didn't hurt them yep. all that much yep. tonight. Now, the change of possession, you, you kind of wonder, you know, would the complexion of the game have changed a little bit had yep. Costello not made the, the fumble on the kickoff return? And I, I only had Barnesville for, for two penalties tonight, and Wheelersburg just for four penalties. So, you know, a pretty well-played game from that standpoint. And I'm not sure. Wheelersburg, I believe, turned the ball over once in the game. So, you know, Wheelersburg did not do a whole lot wrong in the game. Probably the biggest thing was the kind of a fumbled snap on an extra point that they didn't get the conversion on. <laughs> that might be the biggest mistake they made all night. <laughs> right. Uh, they're going to have uh, certainly something for Harvest Prep. Uh, and uh, we'll see. Uh, good luck to Wheelersburg next week. Uh, like you said, Jeff, I I'm a proponent like you. I mean, I think, you know, fans, you know, sometimes they're a little bit territorial, so to speak. I'm like you. I'm like saying if, if we get beat, you know, in the second half and get dominated, you know, in the fourth quarter like we did tonight. I want that team to take it all the way and go. I'm now, you know, if you can't beat them, join them kind of a philosophy. Exactly. You know, when they play Harvest Prep, and I believe Harvest Prep is the defending regional champion, you know, so that, that's there. And that'll be a neutral site game next Friday night. And I'm guessing that game's probably maybe somewhere around Chillicothe, Waverly area. You know, that you, you just never know for sure where the state's going to send games, you know, there. But it will be at a neutral site and be on turf, and it will be Friday night. And, yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of Wheelersburg going deep there. And that's, you know, the farther they go, the better Barnesville should feel. And this is a fun team to watch, too. Uh, they've got some serious weapons. Derek Lattimore, the man tonight, with over 225 yards rushing for the Pirates. Uh, we do want to thank our 93 B&V and YRP TV sponsors again for tonight. We'll try to mention them all here as much as best we can. Food Mart, uh, convenient Food Mart of Barnesville, Box Drop of Bynesville, Skinner Insurance, Barnesville Veterinary Services, PF, PVF Supply, Hissom Service Center here in Barnesville, Vision One Floors, Surgeon Construction, Schrock's Woodworking, Emory Heating and Cooling, Southeastern Med, Smithburger Realty, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Doan Ford, WB Green, Barnesville Do It Best Hardware, Rumor Loudon, Dairy Queen of Barnesville, Village Hardware and Rental, Flag Floors, Barnesville Hospital, Belmont Savings Bank, The Corner Pharmacy, and Lorenz Custom Engravings. And I think I got them all mentioned. A lot of them came on board here tonight, and we appreciate each and every one. Um, let's take a final look at scores. Harvest Prep final, 47-16 over Westmouth. Skingham, Harvest Prep 
and Wheelersburg squaring off next week. Caldwell uh, tonight, Jeff, easy winners, 56-12 over Scioteville East. You've seen uh, Caldwell a little bit uh, this year, um, and that matchup against the River Pilots next week looks like you know, maybe first one to 50 wins. <laughs> and, and people around this area that are interested in that game, next week, Divisions 4, 6, and 7, and that will be a Division 7 game. Caldwell and River go to Saturday night's mm -hmm. neutral site. So that will be interesting to see where that game goes and very interesting. But that Region 27 is, that belongs to Newark Catholic until somebody takes it away. And uh, a little bit of surprise here. Cambridge with a come from behind here. Still in the fourth quarter as of last report. Uh, and they were the lead on Columbus East. Uh, and they were trailing by seven points earlier. Yep, 26-20. Cambridge on top there. That's in the fourth quarter still a play. Uh, do we have another update on that? Less than a minute to go, they're saying. That's still a Cambridge lead right now. So less than a minute to go in that game were the, is the word that we're getting from uh, Brett Klein. Indian Valley winners again tonight, 35-14 over Gallia. Uh, let's see, Waterford 34-7 over Eastern. And and if you had a St. Clairsville score there somewhere, that would be interesting for some yeah, of the people in this area. Let's take a look at that. St. Clairsville was right. trailing in the first half of that game. Last I saw, was they were trailing 17-7. And that is a final Bishop Reedy. 24, St. Clairsville 21. Wow. So, you know, people that were looking for that St. Clairsville Steubenville matchup later are not going to get that. But as you play at this time of year, every step you take is tougher, and you really can't compare teams outside the area. And it's tough to tell how you're going to match up. So, you know, a great year by St. Clairsville comes to an end. So, uh, uh, the other score we had too uh, from uh, we got uh, from Mel Pasu down at Harding Stadium. Steubenville 31 and Bishop Hartley nothing, so a, uh, a big defensive win for Steubenville here tonight, uh, so they continue to roll on in Division IV. Uh, final thoughts here as we head out of Shamrock Stadium tonight. Well, you know, it, it was a good football game. Obviously, you know, from our standpoint, you know, uh, I disappointed. You know, I, I saw Barnesville play many times this year, uh, about eight times, as a matter of fact, and enjoyed it very much. And, you know, you know, it was an excellent ball game. And really, you know, the score is a little bit deceiving. You know, Barnesville leading this game at halftime. But, you know, you know, Willisburg just wore them down. I mean, that's that's simple. I'd be interested mm -hmm. to see the, you know, quotes in the paper tomorrow, you know, from Coach Allen. But I'm sure that, you know, if you were to talk to him right now and his staff, and he, he would, would, would say that, that, you know, they were just more physical and they wore us down. And uh, also, uh, good luck, too, to uh, Union Local Volleyball and uh, Meadowbrook Volleyball uh, in the area. Those teams advancing on to the regional finals tomorrow afternoon? Tomorrow afternoon, yes, for both of them. So and, good luck to them. And, and our, also our, to our, our uh, country, Star. Our cross-country runners, you know, Barnes was Connor Starr. Uh, there's uh, also from this immediate area, we have uh, 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 a girl from Shadyside, a Beckett girl, a boy from St. Clairsville, and also a girl from River, all running in the state meet tomorrow. And Connor Starr goes off, I believe, at 11 o'clock tomorrow. They and won't know what to do when they're running in this kind of weather. Well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're going to be. They're used to running in uh, temperatures near uh, with frost. Uh, yeah, be, be super the weather there. So, so we wish, uh, you know, we wish all those local runners well. You know, that's quite an accomplishment by, by young Con Connor Starr mm -hmm. to make the state meet as a sophomore. Yeah. All right. Good luck uh, to him and to head coach Mark Brown. Thanks for uh, letting me fill the shoes here tonight, Jeff. Great working with you again. First oh, time here in yeah. about uh, a year and a half or so. I was say it's been a lot yeah, of fun. You know, it's fun. Like, like, like I tell people and stuff, you're the one that got me into this <laughs> radio business. You know, years and years ago, and I'm I'm either thankful or, well, we'll say I'm thankful. <laughs> we'll, just say, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Brett Klein and Andrew Dunlap, our YRP TV video crew. Super job, guys, as always. Nice and smooth here tonight. Thanks for listening and watching on 93 B&V and ABC Sports. Our final once again, Wheelersburg 55 and Barnesville 31. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Skinner Insurance was a... ABC Sports presents High School Football. Tonight's game is brought to you by Don't Ford, Southeastern Med, Patrons Buckeye Mutual Insurance, WV Green Insurance, West 40 Auto Sales, Skinner Insurance Agency, Convenient Food Mart of Barnesville, Vision One Flooring, Village Hardware and Rental, Rumor Loudon, Barnesville Do It Best, Barnesville Hospital, The Barnesville 200 Club, Flag Floors, Smithburger Realty, First Ohio Home Finance, PVF Supply, Surgeon Construction, Dave's Buy, Sell, and Trade, Box Drop, Buysville, Emory Heating and Cooling, Barnesville Vet Services, and Allen Hunter State Farm.